Okay. I think we are live, Eric. I think so. <laughs> I am so happy to be live with everybody tonight. And I just want to say hello, everybody, and welcome to All In for the 200th time. Once again, I am Super Mario RPG legend of the seven Eric's. And of course I am still Seth, the hero of time, man. Um, it's crazy. It's crazy to be here for the, the 200th episode of all in, uh, people are already here in the chat hyped. Of course, good to see everybody. Um, and it's been a, it's been a crazy journey. We're going to have a fun show tonight. We, uh, have your community submissions, of course, that we're going to get into. Um, we've also got a very fun top five this is our first time doing like many of these segments live the whole episode live for the first time, our top five times you powered up to 200%. Uh, for the 200th episode. So we're going to get into that <laughs> and uh, and a whole lot more. Yeah, one of the most fun, weird, and unique top fives we've ever done in the history of the show. And speaking of a fun, weird, and unique, once again, one of the greatest independent video game creators on the planet is joining us for the third time. He was our first ever guest here on All In back on episode one. He returned for our landmark 100th episode. And sure enough, ladies and gentlemen, Greg Labanov will be joining us once again for All In episode 200 to talk all about his upcoming game, Beastie Ball. Cannot wait to have him back on the show. But after that, after that, ladies and gentlemen, we have a ton of of things to talk to you about in regards to the show, the future of All In, making our brand even bigger, adding even more to what you've already come to know, love, and respect from both Seth and Eric here at All In. We have a few announcements, a few shadow drops, and a lot of big news, super, super big things coming from the future of your favorite all in Nintendo variety super show. And honestly, here at the end of the intro, we just want to say thank you to all of you. This has been an incredible journey, 200 episodes, years and years and years. And you guys have been there with us. You guys have been so incredibly supportive this entire time, and we're doing it all for you. So for the 200th time, it's, it's time. time. To, to go, go all in. Hey everybody! Good I love to that see new animated you. intro. Thank you. <laughs> little little surprise to start us off with here. Uh, if you're watching us live on YouTube or on Twitter, doing the whole thing live uh, here, of course, on All In, a Nintendo podcast, your weekly Nintendo variety show, reaching every week. No shells left unturned. No point is left unearned. Yeah, new intro that I whipped up, and um, I even put a little. Um, I, I put a little episode 200, you know, logo in there too. <laughs> um, that'll be, that'll be the new state, like in the normal intro, it'll have the like regular logo, but for this special stream, we had to do a, a, a 200 logo. So very cool. <laughs> Look at everybody here and everybody's here in the chat. Shout out to Yarden, Yon 32s here, shy guys here, Sean Capri, Bowza. Let's go everybody. Good to see y'all. Thanks for coming in for this, uh, this special episode, but yeah, um, I got nice Eric. and dapper for this evening. You know? yeah, Eric got dressed up. I didn't. Eric's fancier <laughs> than me. Eric's not dressing me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, there's there's so much to get into. Um, like any episode of All End, though, we do need to do a very, very important thing first. Yes, absolutely. We have been blessed to have been supported by so many amazing people within our community over the past 200 episodes, but there are a select few who have gone above and beyond for us here at All In. Those, of course, are our amazing patrons. 
That's right. Patreon.com slash all in podcast. I want to thank the amazing friends and supporters who have been here with us on this journey, uh, starting with our golden banana bunch. Big thank you to Rob Yapel, Sean, Sean O'Baggins, Ashton, Tim A, aka Neo Prime 33, aka Nintendo Dad number four, Phelan Ward, Bill Tucker, Marcus O'Neill, Liam D, Gamer Jason, Andrew Wilkins, Foolish Fuji, Alan Hashtag Look to the Cookie, Solo, SAZ, and blah, blah, blah. Big thanks to our golden banana bunch. Uh, we appreciate y'all. You can get a seven day free trial to that golden banana tier. And I don't want to spoil anything ahead of time, but you might want to pop that seven day free trial. We might have some stuff for the Patreon folks to check out later in the episode. We'll He's see lying. who's that's to total, say. That's, that's totally a bait and switch. Like there's nothing. It's just a troll. <laughs> who's to say, but moving into our Triforce tier. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to Josh Vaughn, the godfather of Tingle Love Tuesday, John Datfast Cummins of the Retrologic Podcast, as well as the On Topic Retro Podcast, the Globe Trot and Jet Set and Nintendo Hub and Sparky uh, of the Nintendo Hub here on YouTube, Adam Caparello of the Retro Groove Podcast, Shy Guy, the other half of our Shy Guy Mod Squad. Thank you, Shy Guy, Daniel Hinojosa, Dan and Luma, Bowza, the Keeper of the Hugs, the Don Rob, and the Legend himself. The man who honestly needs his own 200 episode podcast at this point. Uncle Randy. Uncle Randy. Big thanks to our patrons. Y'all are the best. We couldn't do any of this without you guys. And um, yeah, Eric, it's um, we're you know, we, we've already kind of said, like, I, I got to admit um, this whole thing, getting this whole thing set up, getting everything ready to celebrate 200 episodes here with you. Uh, it's been like emotional. It's been um, it, it's been the kind of thing where like you don't often take stock of how much you've done, how yeah. much work you've done. And we've been yeah. doing this. We're, we're just two months shy of having done this for four years. Yeah. Um, nearly weekly for four years. So <laughs> sitting on my bed, recording podcast audio on my smartphone, starting yeah. off and trying to trying to figure out how we're going to make this thing work like you and I. Like, we know that, you know, w when it comes to this stuff, like, we know our stuff. And when it comes to broadcast, when it comes to Nintendo, we knew we had something. Uh, but going back four years, going back to 2020 in the midst of the pandemic and really deciding finally is like, we are, we're going to move forward with this. It was obviously just, you know, <laughs> to, to kind of take a sports trope. A sports cliche just taking it one episode at a time not trying to overstretch ourselves really trying to even though we we had an identity for the show really quickly off the bat just trying to solidify everything and 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 find our place we weren't even remotely thinking about 200 episodes at this point we knew we knew we were going to roll uh we we knew we were going to ride just the tracks off this train but like here we actually are 200 down man thank you so much for doing this with me yeah thanks i i mean yeah to to you too and it's it's funny cuz i think sometimes i think about what it must have been like from your perspective cuz for those who we do have some folks who have come into us um and and have joined the community and been a part of this thing more recently so maybe it's worth it to give the quick footnotes of the all end lore um but we, yeah, it, it was like middle of pandemic, June, 2020, when we started, I was like, I want to do a Nintendo podcast. And you were the first one that came to mind to do it with, because we've always wanted to do something together. We've known each other for a long time. And I was like, you know, you've always been like my Nintendo friend, like the only <laughs> other person that I knew that like knew as much about Nintendo as me. And you had the broadcasting experience and I had the podcasting experience. And I was like, this is the wonder twins right here. We can do this. Fun fact, you know? fun fact, just very quickly. Uh, you and I are actually just a couple months shy of having known each other for 15 years. That sounds right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, um, you, you know, you were the first person that came to mind to, to do it. And I, I reached out to you and you were like, yes, let's do this. And I always think about like, um, from your perspective, like I had been doing podcasts for a long time. You'd been doing broadcasting, but it was a new world for you. And, um, and so I just, I commend you for kind of jumping into it, you know, head first and being willing, like, Hey, do you want to do this? Like, you know, every week for the rest of our lives forever. <laughs> Basically it's a big ask. Yeah. And, um, he so got I that on one knee. Feeling. It was very emotional. Yeah. It was very cute. <laughs> very heartfelt. So. No, but like you had, 
you just kind of floated the question a couple times, like, would you be willing? And like, I was always just like, yeah, just let me know when you want to start, like when you're ready. And you asked me a couple of times and then uh, I, you know, finally we reached, I was like, you know what, I'm ready to start doing this for me. Yes. I, my expertise was more in like television broadcasting at the time, uh, having been in the military for so many years, but like I had been trained in like radio broadcasting. And even though it is different, a lot of the fundamentals to, to podcasting are very much the same. So, you know, every time you floated this idea, I was really excited to, to be able to kind of jump back into that area of, of my training and my expertise that I never really got to use when I was in the military. Again, it was much more like of a television broadcasting uh, job that, that I did. So, uh, uh, even though prior to All In, I had only appeared, I'd only kind of guest spotted on a, a couple of my other friends' short-lived podcasts at the time. But, I mean, I know Nintendo, and I know broadcasting. Doing something like this just, I mean, it felt right to me. Yeah, totally. It's And it's funny, too, because um, you, you mentioned, like, there's so many podcasts that come and go. Yeah. Anybody can do the, it's the best and worst thing I think about podcasts is that anybody can make one. Anybody yeah. can do a podcast. You, if you're listening and you've, you've wanted to make a podcast, you totally, totally can. But the amount of people that do it for 200 episodes, it's rare. And I don't think I, I really like appreciated that fully anyway until, cause I've been so head down getting stuff ready for tonight that I haven't really given myself like the emotional cachet to like, let it hit me that like, my God, We've done this together with no, you know, massive change ups or anything like that for 200 episodes. It's crazy. Yeah. And, um, so it's, you know, it's, it's very, it's, it's emotional as I was putting together, you know, we, we put the call out for community submissions. Um, and, and we will get to those in a second. So we got some amazing community submissions that got, that got me right in the feels. <laughs> um, but it really did, you know, like it's, it's good to mark the distance and I'm glad that we're doing that tonight. Yeah. And I will say one thing that I think for me, at least really set the tone and really set all in on the right path, I think was, and again, we'll say this to the person later on in the episode, but the fact that for our episode number one, the fact that Greg Lobanov came in sight unseen to just two people said, like, like we didn't even have a product. We didn't have a proof of concept or anything. We just said, hey, we would like to record talking to you about this game you made that we both love. And we want to try to start a podcast. And for this incredibly busy, incredibly prolific indie developer to come in and donate his time to essentially just two dreamers at the time was like for me, such a huge, huge uh, gift. And a lot of what I did and a lot of what I continue to do for this show is basically just trying to not waste that gift. Yeah. Well said. Well said. Well, okay. Before we get into the standard talking about video games and stuff. All right. Uh, I got to get my we... tissue box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> should we take a look at these community submissions? Cause man, the community came out and uh, I put the, like I said, put the call out and I said, Hey, send in your voicemails, um, and, uh, audio clips or whatever to be a part of the show. And, uh, man, we've got some great stuff. I'm, I've seen it. I had to put it together, but I'm excited for you. You're coming in blind. I, I so. specifically, I specifically wanted to be surprised by this. Um, like genuine question, like, should I be emotionally preparing myself right now? I got really emotional by it. So we're, we're going to take a look at some amazing community submissions that y'all sent in here. Uh, if you're ready, I'm ready, man. I am, man. All right, let's do it. Three, two, one. Let me know if like something goes wrong and you can't hear it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you should be able to hear it. Three, two, one. Hey there. I'm pressed with the magnificent, but you can call me Preston. Hello to Seth, Eric, and everybody who's listening. Hi, Preston. I am hoping you are celebrating a wonderful episode 200. I just wanted to say thank you, especially to Seth and Eric. I've had both of them on my show off the wall, and they're, especially Seth is the one who kind of pushed me and said, yes, you can make your own podcast. You can do this. So it's like, they're just really good guys. You're just really good guys. And thank you for everything that you've done. 
And here's to 200 more episodes, because this show is actually incredible. The amount of work, love, care, passion, all the, all the adjectives that go into the show. Thank you. Let's go. Hey, Seth and Eric. Congratulations so, uh, on 200 episodes. Uh, look forward to 200 more. Definitely been a lot of listening pleasure there. I look forward to all that lays before us and all the surprises that may lay before us that we don't even know about. So y'all definitely keep up the good work. Love y'all guys. Hey, Shy Guy here. Just wanted to first off is. say congratulations, Seth and Eric, on 200 episodes. That is a huge accomplishment, especially given how much hard work and love you guys put into the show. And I also wanted to say thank you. Uh, being a part of the All In community is something truly special and something I'm grateful for every day. And I know that doesn't happen by accident. So thanks to both of you for creating such a great community for us to hang out and talk games and life in general. Hey guys, this is Spider Shan. Congrats on 200 <laughs> episodes. That's amazing. I always look forward to your takes on all things Nintendo, but I also thank you for your unparalleled spotlight of so many incredible indie games. Although my wallet probably doesn't thank you as much. <laughs> Thanks also, though, for creating such a great community. Here's to 200 and more all in episodes. Let's go. Congrats, guys. Love you, Baba. Love you, Trav. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, hello, <laughs> Seth and Eric. Tim! I uh, wanted to say... Nintendo Dad! I have a lot on my mind for episode, or I should say all in 200. My goodness, that is an awesome place to be at. And um, I just had to send a message to you guys to say congratulations. Happy 200 episodes. Um, and this, what a magnificent milestone to reach. I wish I could be more eloquent in what I need to say about <laughs> all this. I just, I had all these things in mind that I wanted to say and probably got it all out in my head, but now I don't know how to say it. But. You guys and your show has been very inspiring for me whenever I listen to it. It's been an honor to be on it and to talk to you guys about things, all things Metroid <laughs> and whatever else you guys had me talk about. He's our Metroid expert. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, we, he had us, uh, we had him for the I'm Metroid Dread review. Um, I'm always in, inspired by what you guys do and how you guys run it and inspired by when I listen to it as a fan. Um, and so excited to see you guys made it to episode 200. Uh, I had to, uh, in case this is a video, you guys can see I have the All In po uh, podcast Discord channel up while I'm talking about it. But in case you don't, that's what I have up in the background in my video. Uh, because this community, even though I'm just a lurker and every now and then I come I think in, more. I think he's been on like five times. It's great to see this community and how big it's gotten over the 200 episodes as well. And it's grown and how much we, uh, or how everybody has fun talking about the different topics and feeds off of what you guys do on your shows between you both. And, um... I, I can see it in the community. So 200 episodes. I hope to see 2,000 more from you guys. I don't know if that's where it's going, but <laughs> and I hope you guys uh, just. I hope something just clicks and the rest of the world gets to see how wonderful of a show this is. Hopefully, Thank I you, made Tim. sense. But congratulations <laughs> again on your episode 200. Love you, Tim. And I'll Thank talk you later. Tim. Bye bye. For those listening to the podcast version, Seth, Seth oh, was hi there. responding Eric to and Seth, somebody asking uh, on how many times Tim had been on the show. Episodes of the we got Adam. Podcast. Hey, Adam. Thank you so much for being a rich oasis of quality content in the barren wasteland of the internet <laughs> this day and age. I commend you and I applaud you. Here's to 200 more. Keep doing what you're doing. I love the chair spin. The chair turn around. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> Barry, Barry. Here from Premium Edition Games. Barry's up there too. I just want to congratulate the All In podcast crew guess. on a yeah. astounding 200 episodes. What an accomplishment! It's been a true honor to be able to join you guys for a few of those episodes, and I could just say, both of you, Seth and Eric, you're two wonderful people. You do wonderful things, and it's a true honor to call you my friend. Here's to 200 more episodes. I'm sure I speak for a lot of other people watching and listening. But I, for one, look forward to tuning in to see what you have in store for us. Take Thanks, care. Barry. Thank you, Hello, sir. my beautiful all-in <laughs> Congratulations on 200 wonderful episodes. 
I can't think of another duo on the internet that spends more of my money on indie games than <laughs> In honor of this occasion, I'm using my powers as Keeper of the Hugs to declare today Free Hug Friday. So go find a friend or loved one and give them a big old hug for me. Yes. With consent, of course. Of course. Congratulations once again, and here's to 200 more. Seth, Eric, hi, it's Sparky. me Sparky, Sparky here, sending this message from the UK. Just want to wish you guys a huge congratulations, a massive congratulations for such an amazing achievement of 200 shows of the All In, one of the best Nintendo podcasts on the airwaves. I'm really, really proud to have been a patron of the show for a while. I love what you guys are doing and try to support it in the best way I can. I'm really, really proud to be part of such a great community that you've created on Discord. And I wish you all the very best for the next 200 shows, uh, wherever that may take you and us all on this amazing journey. So keep up the great work. And um, yeah, let's keep on going. Cheers, guys. Thank you, Spark. I hope you had fun in Spain, buddy. Yes, that's it, man. We, um, we amazing. Our community is amazing. Um, and when I put the call out for submissions, like, I'm fine, you know, way. yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's like, Hey, um, you know, put in the effort to send in a voicemail or a video clip or let alone like a staged thing, like some of the people that, you know, yeah. so I just, um, that, that blew me away. Th yeah. Thank you guys so much. Well, we even got, uh, uh another message from, from Fuji, right? We did. We did. I've got a text uh, submission that Fulia sent in that uh, I definitely wanted to to read. And shout outs to, to Fulia who sent that in. Uh, Fulia says, happy 200th episode all in. Yay. Congratulations on your milestone, friends. You two are doing a wonderful job entertaining the masses with all of your Nintendo and Nintendo knowledge. Between Seth's passion for music and Eric's love for fighting games, All In has been a wonderful place to be. Although I haven't been there since the beginning, you have a lifetime community member in me. So here's to the next 100th milestone episode. Love from the koala down under, Fulia. Thank you very much, Fulia. He was in the chat too, by the way. So shout outs to Fulia. It's probably like 2 a.m. on like next Thursday where she is. So um, <laughs> Seth, shout that's, outs to her. That, that's not how time works, man. <laughs> <laughs> it is in Australia. <laughs> so um, big thanks to everybody who, who sent it. Thank you to Presto, Solo, Shy Guy, Spider Shan, Trav, my little brother, um, Tim, Adam, Barry, Bowser, Sparky, Fulia. Thank you guys so much for um for sending those in it really means the world and um i'm glad that y'all were a part of this episode um it's special because it's one of those things where it's like you know 200 episodes it's great to mark the distance and celebrate all the work that we've done but it's also great to show like this community and show like these people that have come together based around what has been built here so um thank you guys it means yeah. a lot yeah this isn't just something you know to we, we weren't just asking for attaboys we like this is right. our community. We're a community driven project and we want to try to include you guys as much as possible <laughs> in everything we do. Yeah. It's also upside down in Australia. So oh, shout out well, upside down. <laughs> for, uh, for doing that while she's in the upside down there in Australia. So um, <laughs> well, <laughs> she's in your things have happened. So, I mean. All smiles here, all upside down smiles here from fully in the chat. So uh, again, big, big thank you to, to everybody who sent those in. Um, okay. Well, now that we've, you know, kind of opening ceremonies, we let the community sound off and stuff. We do still have an episode of All End to get to. We've got oh, plenty of stuff. Oh, <laughs> still <God. laughs> still a it. lot. <laughs> still a lot to do. We're only just getting started. So, Eric, um, as I ask you every week, what has been going on in your world this week? Uh, well, obviously gearing up for such a milestone, but it's been a really busy week for me uh, for a number of occasions. Um, I will say a little bit of housekeeping. You can also catch me on the latest episode of On Topic Retro, the first episode of season three, a Let's really go. big episode of On Topic Retro that uh, I, you know, uh, was invited to come on and talk about the 35th anniversary of the Game Boy. Nice. Ton of fun, ton of fun. So thank you so much for, for the invite for On Topic Retro uh, from... Uh, our incredibly good friend and giveaway benefactor, John Daffass Cummins, and one of our patrons. He's the best. He's the best, dude. Yeah. Uh, so huge, huge thank you for the invite to that. I actually got to uh, podcast. My first time podcast, I think, was Spider Champ. Nice. So, oh, yeah. He's he's great. 
He's yeah, awesome. we had a ton of fun. Again, make sure to check that out. The first episode of season three of On Topic Retro, all about the 35th anniversary of the Game Boy. Super, super fun. Thank you guys so much for having me on. But in addition to that, been playing a ton of video games this week. A few things, you know, kind of happening within the world of Nintendo. Just very quickly, I'm super excited for the next update for Mortal Kombat 1. You've got Ermac returning to the game after nine years sitting on the bench. But in addition to that, it looks like the game is actually going to be experiencing some pretty significant overhauls because in the character trailer for Ermac, we actually saw, uh, saw a lot of things that really haven't been in the game before. So this coming Monday, there's going to be a new combat cast showing off Ermac and Mavado and very potentially some big changes coming to MK1. And as always, when it comes to these big, big patches, especially for the Nintendo Switch version of the game, I am just hoping that the game continues to to be brought up to as much parity with the other versions of the title as possible. I'm always really excited for these big patches, specifically for the Nintendo Switch version of MK1, because I really do like the the Nintendo Switch version of uh, Mortal Kombat 11, and I really hope that MK1 can actually reach some type of parity that... Yeah. Uh, that that game is so super super excited also seth and i had the option of checking out the triple i initiative this past week a lot of games not currently confirmed for switch that we certainly hope come to nintendo switch certainly holding out hope for uh, a few things but uh, we've got some awesome new content coming to uh, uh vampire survivors uh, we've got, you know, a new Prince of Persia game that I desperately hope comes to Nintendo Switch, Slay the Spire 2, which I hope comes to Nintendo Switch. We did get an official release date for Chia on the Nintendo Switch, I believe June 27th. So, you know, a lot of... Chia. Uh, actually really excited to, to check that out as well. Uh, but in terms of new releases... Seth, a really interesting game came out this past week on the Nintendo Switch that I've been looking forward to for quite some time. And uh, as a matter of fact, there's a video up on our YouTube channel for it right now. As a matter of fact, it went up earlier today as we are recording this. A puzzle slash tactics slash board game slash minesweeper <laughs> called, called Let's revolution and again we posted the first look video of it earlier today that's up on our youtube channel now and i really really dig this game it is so incredibly unique if you're watching the video you can actually see part of my gameplay from the video on it now where you just you kind of have this grid-based map you have a character and you just you're like it's it's hard to describe because there's so many unique things going on but ultimately you have this map full of face down tiles that you are slowly trying to flip up to reveal the entire map of this location. And there are enemies on the map that you have to defeat using various skills and abilities. There are treasure chests and other different things that you can find on the map to get new skills and, and get new abilities. And part of it is kind of a puzzle solving thing because uh, there are just kind of road there are like <laughs> road and non-road tiles, which is weird to say, but enemies can only show up on road tiles. So those are kind of the ones you need to be wary of. So the non-road tiles have this Minesweeper-esque number that shows you how many road tiles that one that tile that you're standing on is currently touching so you have an idea of how to navigate the map and i understand that what i just said is probably incredibly confusing i highly recommend people check out the video because once you see this game in motion it all makes a lot of sense very uh, very quickly but i i really dig it i've already done several runs you can actually see my first full run of the game using yeah, you just beat it uh, just beat yeah. a run yeah why not you, Casual. using the game's kind of uh base soldier character i've already unlocked a couple other characters for the game and i can tell you like even just the next character you unlock which is the the shadow character in the game like it's not even just a different character with new skills it's like a different title 
It's like a different Blood game. Hot. The game plays completely differently with even just the second character you unlocked. And I really love this game's visual flair and style. There's I love it. a ton of personality. And again, it's just, it's so incredibly unique. There were so many different weird disparate vibes that i got playing this game honestly a little minesweeper like no kidding honestly like a little critter crunch okay i could see that yeah a like little, the the animation the, the crispness of it all yeah yeah uh, a little carcassonne and a little final fantasy tactics and like there's so many kind of weird disparate vibes that i was getting while playing this game but i really really enjoyed my time and have enjoyed my time already with let's revolution you guys so it's out right now on the nintendo switch eShop. there is no launch discount unfortunately but it is 1999 but uh yeah we're, we're probably going to be talking about this title uh on another episode of all in very very soon uh super looking forward to that uh, speaking of future episodes of All In, I won't talk about it necessarily too much, but I did start and roll credits on another game this past week that we may actually be talking about in quite some detail in episode 201. So mm. I will I will keep my lips a little sealed in that regard. But uh, honestly, when it comes to other titles that I've been playing, uh, I, I went back and I really jumped back into side order on Splatoon 3. Been having a ton of fun over the past week with side order, basically just trying to 100% that and unlock all the different gear for the character and different yes. like locker accessories and stuff. And honestly, it's just so much fun that I just wanted to go back and do some more runs anyway. So I've been having a ton of fun with that. Really enjoying my time with Double Dragon Gaiden, Rise of the Dragons, and the new free update that dropped for that. I'm trying to unlock everything in regards to the, the new characters and the new versus mode stages. So just a ton of fun. Been playing a lot of Retromania wrestling. Been playing a lot of AEW wrestling because I'm still kind of on this WrestleMania fallout kick. WrestleMania was a pretty momentous occasion so i've also had quite a bit of pro wrestling on the mind while gearing up for episode 200 it's been it's been a lot it's absolutely been a lot it was a it's been a very good recovery week for uh for me after the past few weeks and just uh, just seeing all the good juju and fun games and and everything it's just been i it, it this week has been such a salve for my soul i just want to thank everybody it's been great so thank you all but uh that weird kind of namaste but uh, <laughs> that, that was a that, that was a weird kind of rant you know disjointed summary of what i've been up to but what about you my friend yeah i'll shout out um a couple things well first of all um you know y'all I, I think i maybe talked about this a little bit last week on the show i've been in a little bit of a funk like a gaming yeah. funk nothing has really been connecting um, the, the first thing that I'll, I'll shout out real quick is, um, we, we got Moonglow Bay, um, which just got its switch port, uh, this past week. So, um, there's a video on the YouTube channel that I'm showing right now. This is old man Seth here, um, with the, you know, the, the white beard. I'm only a few steps away from that, um, as we sit here tonight, <laughs> but it's like a, you know, it's got this voxel art style going on for it. Um, it's like, yeah, it's a life sim. It's like a little life sim fishing thing. You live in this little town. Um, I will say, uh, there's like a sort of, there's a moment where, uh, like two minutes into the game, like you, you create your character, you like actually choose which character you want to be like your, your partner and stuff. Um, and, uh, the, they like are presumed dead, like after a time skip, like right away, this is like two minutes into the game. And I'm like, Oh man, I can't handle this. <laughs> and then it turns into this thing where your daughter comes home to kind of like get you out of your funk. Your daughter comes in and she's like, Hey man, you have to like reopen your, your, your food cart, get, get back on the saddle. Like you need to get your life together. And there's a moment Good where advice. she's like. Yeah, and, and and she's like, clean up all the ramen packets in the house. And I was like, oh, this is too real, dude. <laughs> like, I'm somebody... I, I feel attacked. <laughs> I do. I eat ramen probably like three, four times a week. I probably had like actual ramen packets in the kitchen <laughs> at the time that she said that to me in the game. So um, 
perhaps too real. Uh, shout outs to Lockleth in here, who's in the chat, and she says special moms. Um, there, there was a little mom in there where the dog that you have in the game is named Waffles. And for those who don't know, Lockleth and I have a little bit of a sibling rivalry um, of Waffles versus French Toast. And then Amanda, who's our other co-host on the Nintendo Drive, is Team Pancakes. So this has been kind of a legendary thing over in the carpool gaming community. So, of course, I could not escape from <laughs> French Toast. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Yes. I'm te- French Toast is what I is what oh, I nice. go with, too. Nice. That, so, we need that Splatfest. I agree. Yeah, so so Lockleth is waffles. I'm French toast. Amanda is pancakes, um, and so that's become a legendary <laughs> so, thing. Are you sure those aren't just like your spy nicknames when you go to clandestine <laughs> missions in other countries? <laughs> waffles, this is pancakes. Waffles, this waffles, is pancakes. This is pancakes. Uh, French toast French has toast, just broke come in. into the. Yeah, French toast <laughs> has just broken into the bank, um, and now as you can see, uh, the chat is already going off with you know hashtag team pancakes hashtag team waffles you know there's something about this that has just captured the imagination of people um and and so anyways i could not escape waffles propaganda even in moonglow bay um so that was funny but anyways it's cool the the game is neat i will say i was a little worried how it was going to run on switch it runs totally fine okay Um, good to hear it runs totally fine um, you know, they're in cutscenes. There's a little framiness, but like, as you can see, like in normal gameplay, totally, totally fine. Um, you kind of just, you know, fun, little, fun, little, like life sim. If you're looking for like a cozy life sim thing, uh, you could do worse than moon globe. The, yeah. my favorite thing about the game, uh, Lena rain does a soundtrack. Oh, and, wow. Okay. Lena rain like, of, uh, Celeste fame and, you Chicory. know, Chicory. Yeah, yeah. Works with Greg Lebonov all the time. We may be hearing her name a little bit later on in the episode. Yeah. So she, she does the music for this and it's great. Um, it, it's really, really, really good stuff. So <laughs> but I say that, that, that checks out. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, you know, if she's involved with the project, the soundtrack is probably worth, uh, listening to. So, uh, but I like it. I dig it. It's, it's pretty neat. Um, and you know, if you, if you've been looking for something like that on your Nintendo switch, not that there isn't, you know, other games like this on offer, um, it, it seems like a good option. Yeah. I've actually been um, lurking in a few of Lockleth's streams over the past couple of weeks playing like Stardew and other games. And I was like, yeah. man, I really need a new cozy game. Well, there you go. That this might be it. Um, I'll tell you what though, while I've been in this kind of gaming slump, um, I've been looking for something this. to, I've been looking for something to kind of pull me out of it. You know, I've been, I've not really been connecting with anything, um, in a big way to where like, I don't want to stop playing this. I just like, I'm so in this world until we got this game that's coming out later this month on a Nintendo switch called before the green moon. Um, man, I love this game. Uh, it's not going to be for everybody. It is a life sim, farming sim sort of thing, very inspired by Harvest Moon 64 in particular. Um, it's kind of ugly, like the the world that you're living in. You're, it, it's like the the whole setup of it is you're you're on this planet that is just like destitute, downtrodden. You know, like weather is like wacky. Like you have like seasons where it's torrential downpour and then seasons where it's just totally dry. Those are like the only two seasons in the game. Um, Well, I think, I think I might know one of the reasons that you like it. If I didn't know, and if you just asked me sight unseen, I would probably just immediately guess this was an analgesic game. Just looking at it. It's funny. You say that like the way I would kind of describe this is like if analgesic made a farming sim, basically is how I would describe this because um, like the visual style is kind of similar to like a Stephanie or an Anadine exactly too. that that was immediately the vibes that I was getting just again just looking at this game. Yeah, but but even beyond that, um, it's the way that this game tells its story. It's the characters. It's the it's the world. Like you you're on this planet that is just like yeah it's it's it sucks. It's downtrodden. Everybody wants to get off. Everybody wants to go to this utopian society on the green moon. And there's like a lift that comes down twice a week uh, or once a week rather, and then goes back up and like people who can afford to uh, get on the moon can go and get their life set up on the moon and get off of this rock or whatever. Um, But like you come to realize it's got this like 
anti-capitalism message and it's got this kind of like you know yeah like everybody wants to get up to the moon but it kind of sucks up there you sure, know Jesus didn't make this <laughs> like <laughs> it, it you know the the people that are up there are leaving their families behind they're selfish and callous they come down and you know they they come down to visit basically as like tourism and they don't even talk to you and they litter and they throw trash all over the place and they're completely spoiled and don't understand their station in life. So you're down here wanting to escape and you, you're you building up money throughout the course of the game to like have, it, it costs a ton of money. It's like $100,000 to get your moon ticket and get off. But you you come to kind of like know the characters so much that you don't want to leave. And you're like, it's this heartbreaking moment of like the win condition in order to roll credits on this game, you have to leave all of these people that you've grown to know and love. You build relationships. There's even romance options in this game. Um, and like, it's just beautiful. Like it's a, it's a really beautiful, tender human story of people making the most out of their station and learning kind of the crossroads between human relationships and like, your goals if you have them um it's also like a solid well done farming sim um on top of it all with interesting kind of like it's like a little deconstruction of the farming sim genre and i just loved it i it kind of blew me away a little bit I, I don't know where i would rank it right now but like you're gonna see this on my top 10 at the end of the year for sure um i just had a great time with it so it's called before yeah. the green moon. It's not out yet on it's it's, it doesn't come out until the 30th. We got it very early. So big thank you to turn follow the developers who gave it uh, to us so early. So we got to check it out. Um, they're the same developers of wide ocean, big jacket. Oh, wow. Which okay. Okay. We, okay. That yeah, was, which we that was throwing it back to the early days of all in there. Yeah. That's all in episode like seven or something like that. Yeah. Like single digit um, episode. <laughs> yeah. And, um, so it's the same developers as wide ocean, big jacket. This is like their, their follow up to that. But wide ocean, big jacket was kind of like a, it was interactive, a visual novel. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. This is like a, like a real like game, you know, like there's a lot <laughs> kind of going on here. Like it's shots fired. I don't mean visual to sound, novels. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't mean to say, sound derogatory. I just mean that like, there I is did, a lot yeah. more, a lot more gameplay. Yeah, and, like, I just love, like, the visual, like, the, the isometric camera. It kind of reminds me of, like, Final Fantasy VII, like, the mm -hmm. slums of Midgar, you know? And, yeah, I can see where um, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking at the video, I can definitely see that correlation. The slums of Midgar specifically, it. yeah. I dig it. I dig I it. Had, I had such a good time with this, so I just wanted to, to shout that. It's called Before the Green Moon. Keep keep your eyes open for it uh, if you're looking for, for something like that. Um, and then, yeah, just other than that, just been working on this to be honest yeah. and, and gear, you know, I've been watching a bunch of free run, but you know, that's another topic <laughs> for another place. Um, and I yeah. will say just very quickly, uh, I have also been, we, we did also get some new NSO games, uh, this week that, uh, I was pretty excited for you guys know that I'm a huge fan of shmups. I even did a review for our type final two. A long time ago on this show, so seeing Super R Type come to the Nintendo Switch, uh, Super Nintendo NSO, also made me really happy. Just, but just very quickly, shout out to Amazing Hebereki because <laughs> a month or two ago, uh, you and I specifically did like a big Sunsoft thing. We did. And Sunsoft is really working hard. Like they've got this whole Sunsoft is back banner. And they're, they even announced a new uh, retro games collection this past week. Sunsoft is working really hard to to get back into the public video game discourse and into the video game zeitgeist. And they've been pushing it. I mean, we just got Euphoria 2 yeah. uh, a couple weeks ago. Great game. Uh, you know, starring Hebereki. Sunsoft's basically kind of mascot or something. And... You know, you and I did this whole big top five of, of Sunsoft games we'd like to see come back and doing research for this, me being the fighting game aficionado that I am, found out that there was an actual, like, fighting game Battle Royale starring Hebereki. Segoy like, Hebereki. Yeah. Segoy Hebereki, uh, a.k.a. Amazing Hebereki. And that was basically the superlative that I used when I discovered that that thing existed. I'm like, are he you said Segoy. 
Exactly. <laughs> I, I, verbatim. That's exactly what I said. I said, I would love to play this. That uh, it's probably never going to happen. You know, it, it, it admittedly is on Japanese Super Nintendo NSO. But just in terms of like a proper Western release, I was like, I'm probably never going to see that. But it's really cool this exists. Maybe one day. And then here, like a month later, it just drops in my lap as part of the NSO. Really makes me wonder if Sunsoft is actively working with Nintendo when it comes to some of these NSO drops. Actually makes me wonder kind of how these NSO drops work from a from a setup standpoint. But I would I just love to that, know that. I would yeah. love to know that as well. But I just thought that like that was just such a fun and weird and amazing coincidence that this awesome game I just discovered few episodes back when we were doing all the sunsoft stuff and i thought i would never see like a western release literally like a month later gets a western release (laughs) it's like what let's go let's go lfg you love to see it you love to see it i yeah you i I love how they're bringing more like japan only games and letting more people play them yeah that wasn't even the only one from that nso drop we got wrecking crew 98 in that same drop because nintendo apparently 97 Exactly, yeah, so. because apparently Nintendo <laughs> decided to make a follow-up, a finally make a sequel to Wrecking Crew on the Super Famicom two years into the Nintendo 64's life cycle, like you yeah. do, apparently. It's, that game's pretty cool, though, and, and it has um, it has a really cool design for Form and Spike. They, 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 for a couple of years there, they were trying to make Form and Spike a thing. A like, thing, yeah. They, like, he had a new design for that. Then there was like a golf game that also only came out in Japan that also featured form and spike with a totally different design. So they were playing with them. They were trying to do some stuff and then form and spike would not be seen of again until the Mario movie. So, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, don't, I cool. tried, I tried wrecking crew 98. I didn't really jive with it as much as the old game. Although you can actually play the original wrecking crew in mm-hmm. wrecking crew 98, which is also pretty rad. Nintendo out here, you know, releasing, retro game collections back on the super nintendo well yeah. other retro game collections because you know mario all stars and all that that's true that's true very cool well yeah that's that's kind of what, what we've been playing what we've been up uh, what we've been up to should we do our first ever live top five you know what i think we should here we are episode 200 we have truly leveled up you might even say we're at 200 percent power and for this incredibly special milestone episode we knew we wanted to have an incredibly special fun top five and frankly let you guys in on it it was actually kind of hard very hard (laughs) to nail down exactly what we wanted to do however the idea that we came up with turned out to be one of the most bizarre one of the most fun one of the most interesting top fives we've maybe ever Done. So strap in, folks, for episode 200 of All In, a Nintendo podcast. We are going to be counting down the top five times we reached 200% power in a video game. Yes. Eric, the top five times you powered up to 200% for episode 200. (laughs) What are the rules? Okay, so... Follow us on this because this top five is going to be at the same time incredibly specific, but also incredibly wide open. Sure. So check this out. For this top five, we are counting down Seth and I's absolute favorite moments in Nintendo history where you quantifiably increased your character's ability or capacity by a factor of two. Now, this could have been a gradual increase over time. It could have been a temporary power-up, or it could have been a permanent upgrade. But uh, again, that is what we are talking about. We are talking about the times that your character doubled in ability or capacity throughout Nintendo history. And again, this was such a weird one to to research because again at the same time incredibly specific but you can really apply that idea to a thousand different things i think a lot of people are talking to you know maybe thinking about a, a spell in an rpg that doubles your damage output but i mean just think about all the different abilities or capacities or capabilities that you've had access to in literally any video game in nintendo history we're not just talking about that. We may be talking about 
a, a time that you got an awesome backpack that doubled your storage capability. Maybe we'll talk about a fishing rod that had twice as much line strength. There are so many different applications for this. No kidding. I'm not just saying this because this is episode 200. I honestly think this may have been my favorite top five to research in the history of this show, just because of how weird and unique it was. Uh, I don't know if it's the same way for you. I know it is a really fun and weird and unique top five. It is. It, it is. It's an interesting one. I'm glad that we're doing it. Yeah. I mean, we, we wanted the top five for episode 200 to be appropriately themed. We didn't just want to do like the top five Mario enemies or, or whatever. Like yeah. we wanted it to be like a, a theme top five. So this is going to be a fun one. I'm excited to get into it. Why don't you kick us off with your list? Yes. Okay. So hopefully if there's any confusion about what we're talking about, uh, we'll get into the list and hopefully it'll all become very clear, but my number five is actually the DK barrel from Donkey Kong Country. Okay. And let me explain how that quantifies or qualifies rather for this list. One of the cool things about Donkey Kong Country is the fact that it's not just played with a single character. You start with Donkey Kong, but one of the really unique things that people have forgotten about it is the fact that it's not just an amazing platformer, it's an amazing platformer with interchangeable characters. And while you start the game with Donkey Kong, you very quickly break open a DK barrel and you all of a sudden have double the number of playable characters, which in addition to those characters' individual skills and abilities also has the add-on effect of being able to take twice as much damage before mm -hmm. you die. And I'm not even just talking about the very first DK barrel that you run into in jungle hijinks in Donkey Kong Country. I'm talking about the entire time that you're playing DK, the entire time that you're playing Donkey Kong Country, the original trilogy and the new ones. The, the difference in feel yes, when you have one character versus when you break open that DK barrel and get access to a second character... Anybody who's played those games knows there is a tangibly different feel to the game. When you're walking around with just one character, you're walking on eggshells, you feel like you have zero capabilities, you feel like you are vastly underpowered for the challenges that lie ahead. However, you break open that DK barrel, you get access to that second character, and now all of a sudden you feel like you can truly play the game. Because when you have doubled your capabilities, the sum winds up becoming more, well, the sum, is, it's more than the sum of its parts. That's the metaphor yeah. that I'm trying to antiquate. Because in addition to having those two characters, even back in the first Donkey Kong Country, like they actually had like team attacks in the first Donkey Kong Country. Diddy Kong could throw, uh, Diddy Kong could throw Donkey Kong off a wall and roll down a slope on Donkey Kong like he was a barrel. And, of course, they would add to that in future games. Like, you can throw your buddy and you'd have all these different capabilities. But just for that simple fact that when you're playing the Donkey Kong Country games, how different it feels to play the game with one character versus two, it's a completely different experience. So it absolutely had to make my list. What's your favorite uh, uh, character to play as in DK? Is it Dixie? Yeah, it's got to be Dixie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it really does have to be. We we did a retrospective recently on Tropical Freeze. Yes, we did. And we we talked about just how good Dixie is in in that game. But um, yeah, I mean, overall, got to be Dixie. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's why DKC two is so fondly remembered. The yep. introduction of Diddy's girlfriend and that incredible helicopter hair of hers. But is she uh, she is supposed to, she's supposed to be Diddy's girlfriend. Yeah, is that a thing? Yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah, she's I mean, great. However, I relationships her. work within the the gorilla slash <laughs> yeah. chimpanzee. I'm not really sure. We could ask David Attenborough about that, but <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine? That'd be amazing, actually. Like that having him narrate like Donkey Kong Country would be pretty good. Oh, well, I, it, <laughs> we're still not 100 percent sure the direction they're taking with the next Mario Brothers movie. Maybe Diddy or maybe never Dixie could never. show up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, maybe she could show up. But for my number four. 
for my number four, I'm cheating just a tad because I'm okay. including multiple instances. However, they're all from the same game and kind of fall in line with the same spirit. And my number four is actually a Legend of Zelda, a link to the past, specifically mm. the Master Sword, the <laughs> the weird bat that doubles your magic meter, and then the blue slash red tunics. Because it's okay. kind of this running theme throughout A Link to the Past that when you increase the capabilities of your magic, of your attack, or of your defense, it's always by a factor of two. Anybody who's even gotten the Master Sword in A Link to the Past knows that I don't want to sit here and say it's twice as big as Link's initial sword, sure. but, it, but it quantifiably does twice as much damage, which alone feels like the game has opened up so, so much more. Now, all of a sudden, you're doing twice as much damage. All these enemies that used to take two hits are immediately fell by your sword. But it's not just that. You can actually do that again. You can actually increase the power of your sword by a factor of two yet again. Now, you've got to do it over two upgrades, but you can actually double the power of your sword twice in A Link to the Past. And the, when I found out that you could do it a second time, that was a mind-blowing moment for me as a kid. Another moment that I don't want to say was necessarily mind-blowing is more of kind of a WTF moment, is the time you find this weird talking bat and it punishes you by doubling the size of your magic meter. I say doubling the size of your magic meter. Effectively, what it does is it cuts the amount of uh, magic power that you use in half right. for spells. And I was, especially when I was young playing video games, I was one of those kids that, like, I never used items in RPGs because what if I needed it for an emergency? Oh, I, never, I never wanted to use special attacks that used permanent resources because what if I need it for an emergency? And the magic in A Link to the Past was very similar to that for me. I never wanted to use it because it felt like the magic meter was so small. I could only do a few scant things. I didn't want to use it for anything outside of like using the lantern or something to light up dark. But once you double the size of it, all of a sudden, for me at least, magic seemed like a viable option. Like I could actually you know, use a couple of those elemental medallions. I could use the fire rod or the ice rod and actually have enough power to do stuff with it. So having that for me also really opened up. It felt like it really opened up a lot of potential, a lot of possibilities for the game. And then very quickly, last thing, getting the tunics, the blue and ultimately the red tunic toward the end of the game, which doubles your capacity and then quadruples, doubles it again, your capacity to take damage in A Link to the Past, by the time you get that last tunic, you basically just feel like you are the final boss of that game. <laughs> Once you've gotten all this, Exactly. You've gotten the final sword. You've got that increased magic meter and all the tools. You can take four times as much damage. Uh, I mean, at that point, you basically just feel untouchable at that game. You're basically just running around, murdering everything, cleaning up. Even Ganon doesn't seem like that big of a challenge. So for such an iconic game and all of those incredible moments where I was just constantly doubling my ability or capacity in a number of different ways, I just, I could not leave a link to the past off my list personally. Good game. That link to the past, pretty good video game. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's you know very niche. Not a lot of people have heard of it, but you should really check it out is on NSO. So you know, FYI. Uh, but we're going to take a hard left turn right here going into my number three. Because my number three is actually from Inscription. Okay. I knew I wanted to have some indie representation on my list. My number three uh, is slash R, the mycologist from Inscription. Yeah. We got to explain like the, the yeah. mycologists and, and what they are in, in yes. the context because inscription is kind of couched at least at the beginning as like an interesting like deck building yes. roguelike card game. Yeah. And for a large portion of the game, it is. And 
the individual like card game, the deck building matches that you're going to be playing in that first massive chunk of the title are very short form and many of them lasting only a couple turns. So when you get access to the mycologist, which is a special ability that you can find during one of your runs in inscription that can take duplicate cards and merge them into a single card that literally doubles the attack and defense so of sick. the creature. Seth can vouch for this because he's also played inscription because a of lot. the short form nature of these matches having, especially if you can do it with a particularly strong creature, having that beefed up creature can honestly be the difference in maybe losing your next match or having basically just a straight shot toward the end of the run. Because if you happen to get that creature in your opening hand, because the attack and defense may have doubled, but the cost did not. Mm -hmm. So being able to get that doubly strong creature right out the gate in these short form deck building, I cannot tell you how many first turn KOs and how many yes. times that 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 mycologist gave me a card that basically just turned into the backbone of my run. How many times that happened where that card, that beefed up creature with double the attack and defense basically became my strategy. So that was when I discovered that and what the mycologist could do. That essentially was my goal. Whenever I saw the mycologist pop up on the map, I was a hard line. I need to get to the mycologist right now. Again, you need to have a duplicate creature. You need to have two creatures in order to, to do that. However, it is an incredibly, incredibly powerful capability in an already fantastic game. Uh, and <laughs> again, absolutely had to put it in my top five. Um, you have a favorite card or favorite ability from inscription, Seth? It's, it's one. I love using the squirrels, um, the squirrels, yeah. <laughs> in, in, in inscription too. Um, yeah, I, I love that game. Tim, Tim's here in the chat saying, does the end of Metroid dread count? It might've been times 10 the power. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, probably so. What, yeah. What a great moment though. What a mom. That's actually a, a very good point for this top five. I personally didn't consider anything that I couldn't quantifiably, Right. determine was exactly two times because there are so many times throughout you know video game history where you get this surge of power i even like i even thought about the end of super metroid and right you know i i won't spoil the ending for you but you get a pretty significant power oh, surge yeah. at the end of super metroid don't spoil super metroid <laughs> yeah I, I know i know i know <laughs> but i only considered stuff that could quantifiably be determined to be twice the right. amount of power and I don't know if they had explicitly told us that the Metroid suit at the end of Metroid Dread was twice power. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe Samus could have made the list, but uh, but that's a good point, Tim. Thank you very much. Also, Metroid Dread turns out is good game. Thank you for joining us for that review, Tim. Uh, and thank you for the message. That was that was amazing. Thank yes. you, sir. Uh, going into my top two, uh, the only reason that this isn't number one with a bullet is just because of pure sheer bias. My number two is Galaga. Oh, big Galaga fan. If for those I, who don't know that about Eric, I am a huge Galaga fan. And there is one thing about Galaga that turns it from being just an incredibly straightforward and frankly, generic classic arcade shmup to genuinely one of my favorite arcade games of all time. And if you've ever played Galaga, you already know. And that is the ability to add a second ship to your arsenal. Game changer. I, it is a game changer. Uh, for those who've never played Galaga, very early on in the game, even in the first stage of the game, the titular Galaga enemies actually have the ability to not just destroy your ship, I mean, you're going to deal with a lot of enemies who are shooting at you and who will just outright destroy your ship. However, the Galaga enemies can straight up capture your ships. And with the next ship, you can actually free your, uh, your trapped player one. If that happens, 
that second ship gets added to your arsenal, and now all of a sudden you have twice the ships, twice the firepower, and all the death. If you've ever played Galaga, that basically just is the strategy. Your goal at the beginning of Galaga is to get that set that second ship as quickly as possible. Like it's not even really the same game if you're not playing with two ships. The ships can be uh, destroyed individually. You do also become a much bigger target. The ships can be destroyed individually. You don't destroy both ships just by one of them getting hit. But if that happens, again, your goal immediately becomes to get a ship captured so you can free it and have that second ship again. I mean, it's just it's one of the most iconic things in arcade history. So, and again, the only thing really keeping it from being my number one with the bullet is just incredible, incredible bias. But in terms of increasing your capabilities by a factor of two, that's one of the most explicit and famous instances that I can really even think of. Yeah, man. Do, doing a top five live is very funny and very different than our normal process because you don't realize that when you do a top five live, you might have multiple people in the chat laughing at the word titular. Uh, so, you know, there you go. Very mature people in the chat. Mm. <laughs> Lots. I, love, I, love I love our it. community so much. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> titular titular uh, titular but uh yeah i love galaga and yes like seth said i'm a massive massive galaga fan a lot of people don't know this about me i was actually at, at one time one of the top galaga players on the planet um but uh yeah it's 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 so great and that second ship is is just absolutely clutch however they, they would recruit him if there was an alien invasion, they would recruit Eric. Yeah, I would be the last starfighter. Like the last starfighter, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be up there in my own ship doing like Death Blossom and stuff like that. Yeah. Where's but, the second uh, one? Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, but going into my number one, I do have to apologize just a tad because my number one will actually, uh, will actually require just a little bit of math. Okay. However... However, my number one really couldn't have been anything else. Once I actually saw the numbers, my number one couldn't have been in anything other than the appearance of my favorite Pokemon of all time, Lucario, in Super Smash Brothers Brawl. Let's go. You're going to be the one doing the math and not me, right? Because I can't do it. No, 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 no. No, everything's perfectly okay. fine. But for those who don't know how Lucario works... In Smash Brothers, from the moment Lucario was announced, he was immediately my main. But it turns out Lucario actually has a very interesting and unique gimmick, that being what they call his aura, or her aura. And that is essentially, uh, as Lucario continues to take damage, Lucario's power continues to increase the amount of strength Lucario had the amount of damage Lucario does and the amount of pushback Lucario has on his attacks or her attacks continues to increase. Now, uh, the Super Smash Brothers wiki page was able to actually quantify all of this. At 0% damage, Lucario is actually the weakest character on the roster because Lucario's attacks actually do less damage and less pushback than even, the, uh, than even a base level character does. Lucario is not the type of character that starts off at par with the rest of the cast and just becomes more powerful. In order to balance Lucario, they had to make the 0% Lucario a little bit weaker. So at 0%, Lucario has 0.7, uh, has 70% of his complete power. He is at 0.7 capacity. However, as he continues to take damage, that power and that pushback increases, Lucario's ceiling, his maximum power and pushback in that game is 1.4%. He is 1.4%, uh, 1 1.4 times as strong as any of the characters. But again... I'm already lost. <laughs> yeah. So, But anybody who's out there actually doing the math, yes, Lucario starts off each life at 0.7% or at 70% power, but ends at 140% power compared to the rest of the cast, which is, if I'm not mistaken, a doubling 
of power and okay. capacity and increase. Uh, and I, I love playing as Lucario in Smash Brothers specifically because even though when Lucario is at high damage, he's got his max aura, sure, a single attack can send him flying off the stage. But at max aura, Lucario is one of the scariest characters on the roster. And I just, there are a few things in video games that make me feel as powerful as running around with Lucario at max aura, who can throw around these uh, these aura force balls that are just the size of entire characters. It's crazy. The, these force palm attacks that just take over the entirety of, of the screen, this extreme speed uh, recovery ability that basically goes the entire distance of the map and can be completely controlled, uh, especially at max power. I don't know if that, uh, that ability actually goes double the distance, but uh, Lucario at Max Aura is just one of my favorite things. It just is. And learning that quantifiably it's a doubling of his base power and ability compared to his floor, his floor compared to his ceiling. Just, again, I, that was the only thing that could have possibly bumped Galaga out of the number one spot for me. Again, Lugario is my favorite Pokemon, one of my favorite characters to play as in Super Smash Brothers, and it just it puts a smile on my face every time I'm running around with him at Maxora, as fleeting as those moments might be. Uh, but just very quickly to run down my list one last time, my number five are the DK barrels from Donkey Kong Country. My number four is the Master Sword, the Magic Meter, and the Tunics from Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. My number three, the Mycologist ability from Inscription. My number two, getting your second ship in Galaga. And my number one is Lucario, specifically in Smash Brothers Brawl. It does look like they've tweaked those numbers for future releases, but specifically for Super Smash Brothers Brawl for the first time that Lucario appeared, and for far and away, the game that I spent the most time with him in, Lucario's 0% floor to uh, max aura ceiling is just, it's, it's like Dragon Ball Z power-up for me. That's just a happy place for Eric. So that's my list. Nice. Shouts to Bowser in the chat. The first time getting a mushroom is Mario. Yes, that Pretty I actually special. considered that. I actually considered that because it doubles your capacity to take damage. So I did consider the super mushroom. Uh, mm. Again, yeah, the Bowser, uh, the Bowser, Bowser, and a lot of the people in the chat. They're kind of their 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 gears are turning now. They're thinking about all the different now ways thinking and, about it. and all the different yeah. applications that you could have for that. But yes, I'm really excited to hear what your list is, my friend. All right. Well, let's, let's get into it. Um, so same as you, um, you know, and, and we'll get into honorable mentions after we get through. Thank you for confirming my math shy guy. Yeah. Shy guy did, did check <laughs> your math. So we, we did, we didn't need that. Um, uh, yeah. So, so I did the same as you, I, I wanted my list to be quantifiable also. Yeah. And when we talk about some honorable mentions, I'll shout out a few things that are like maybe not as quantifiable, but for my actual top five, it had to be like, yeah, you are doubling. Um, so to kick things off with my number five, one of my favorite Mario power-ups is the double cherry. Um, <laughs> I love that so much. <laughs> I love it from, from Mario 3d world. It actually also appeared in captain toad, the switch and 3ds versions. Very true. Um, I love the double cherry. It's so fun. The way that like, I mean, yeah, it, it does exactly what it says on the tin. When you collect it, you double and it can, it actually, exponentially expands as well, where if two Mario's collect it, they turn into four Mario's and so on and so forth. Um, but like the way that it's integrated in level design, but also like utility is really fun and interesting. Like, I mean, just, just objectively, like you can stomp twice as many Goombas if there's two Mario's, you know? Um, and it's just like a fun creative. I also, I, I like the, I, this is so stupid, but like, I, I like the <laughs> fact that it's a cherry. Like, I like that it's like two cherries. Like it reminds me of like Pac-Man or something. I don't know. I just really like it. And it's, well, it's one of my favorites. Having the cherry there with the two individual kind of bulbs of the cherry yeah. is a good visual representation of what the power up is about to do. It's very cute. And, and yeah, like it's, it's simple. Like, again, it's just one of those like cool ideas. That's just, 
it's the classic Nintendo thing. Here is a cool idea executed perfectly and integrated perfectly into master class level design. Um, so I've just, I've always liked it. Um, yeah. we did a top five Mario power ups recently. And if, if it wasn't on my top five, it was very, it was like close. I, I love the double cherry. I think, I think it's inarguably one of the most unique power-ups in Mario's, which is yeah. saying something because there's been a lot, but yeah, I love the double cherry on your list. Yes, man. Very, very good. Uh, okay. Our number four, this is one that I actually kind of recently discovered. I recently started playing monster hunter stories too. And there's a really neat, you know, that, that game's cool because it basically takes the concept of monster hunter, turns it into a Pokemon style, you know, turn-based battle system that still feels like monster hunter somehow. It's still about breaking parts and hunting monsters and like, it still feels like monster hunter. Um, but there is a thing that you can do a, a pretty important thing that you can do, especially when you're taking on giant, you know, bigger and badder monsters, um, called the double attack in monster hunter stories too, which is, you know, it's got this kind of rock, paper, scissors battle system where, you know, you can either do like a, a strong attack, a technical attack, or like a speed attack. And, you know, it's like rock, paper, scissors. If you're, if they're attacking you with a speed attack and you're coming with a strong attack, you're going to lose, you know, it, it cycles like that. But if you're Monsty, you're, you're sort of like companion Pokemon esque monster. I love that. They call um, them that. Yeah. That, that you take into battle with you. If you guys are both attacking the same enemy with the same type of attack and it is the like power advantage type of attack, you will initiate this rad double attack that has like an anime, like over the top <laughs> animation and everything. And um, not only does it do an, an insane amount of damage, um, <laughs> but it actually will uh, increase your kinship gauge as well. Um, so getting to double up on, on a monster together with your companion um, doubling your capabilities and also feeding into that kinship gauge, which will basically trigger your like ultimate attack. Um, very, very cool. Monster Hunter Stories 2 is a cool game. That's dope. I like yeah. that. I played it a little. Cool. Well, I played the demo a little bit. And I think I saw exactly what you're talking about once or twice. And yeah, those are very over the top, like attack cutscenes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's cool. It's important. An important, uh, if you, if you want to do well, you're going to need to learn double attacks. Um, okay. Going into my number three, uh, I wanted to make sure that I had an indie representative as well on my list. And if anybody knows me, you know, that I love Cobalt core. Um, <laughs> this is sort of, it's not all that dissimilar from inscription. This is another deck building, uh, roguelike game. But one of the things about Cobalt core is, uh, you can choose between like five or six different ships that all have very different sort of gimmicks or use cases um, for the, the ships. Yeah, there's excitement from Shy Guy about Cobalt Core uh, <laughs> in the chat. So I wanted to specifically shout out the gimmick of the Ares ship model, which is one of my favorite ships in Cobalt Core. And the thing about the Ares ship is, unlike most ships in the game, it actually has got two guns. Um, the thing is, is you have to specifically trigger when that second gun comes out in what is called war mode. So you can basically, um, you, you can choose, you know, basically if you want to have your gun on like the left or the right side of your ship, or you can do what's called flipping the card and activating war mode, which has both guns active at once. And immediately, if you've ever played Cobalt Core, you know how big of a deal that is to be able to get two shots mm -hmm. on your turn with both mm -hmm. guns, um, can make a huge, huge, huge difference. So, um, it's just a really cool, powerful, you know, ship and a, and a cool thing to like pull out. If you need like a lot of damage, if you need to double your power in a pinch, uh, it's a great way to do it. Yeah. And Cobalt even... Core, everybody should play Cobalt Core. Yeah, it's amazing. It's not even just about doubling the damage. Is that extra attack, that extra gunshot, also takes up extra space. Yeah. So, I, I mean, yeah, the uh, dodging attacks and whiffing with your gunshots is a big part of Cobalt Core. And having multiple shots uh, that really expands your, your, like, your kind of area of attack alone is a great capability to have. It is sick and I love it. Um, okay. My number two, 
This one is a little bit interesting, and I, I liked it the more I thought about it. And I talked about this when we reviewed the game um, on the show. We did a boomerang review on WarioWare Move It. My number two is just playing that game in co-op. And stick with me on this, because <laughs> this is kind of a weird one, but I again, I really liked it the more I thought about it. When you play WarioWare Move It in co-op, you know, not only does it, you know, double the amount of participants in the game, um, but there is some functionality when you play that game in co-op that is exclusive to playing it in co-op. And one of the neat things about the game is uh, if my wife and I are playing, for example, and there is a mini game that she is not able to do, um, I can come in and do the mini game uh, for her, essentially, and bring her back to life. In addition to that, um, if you run out of lives collectively, you can also do these kind of like yoga poses uh, together. And if you both do it, you'll get all four of your lives back. So <laughs> the, the doubling of your power and capabilities in WarioWare move it just by simply playing with a second person IRL, uh, is very cool and unique to that game. And I also just wanted to shout the game out because I really do think it's extraordinarily underrated. I think it is every bit as good as smooth moves and it's a, a darn shame that more people have not played WarioWare move it. Like I, I think it's excellent. And if you do play it, Play it in co-op, man. To me, that is like the ideal way to play that game. So, very good. WarioWare Move It. Play it. Uh, okay. To get into my number one. Um, as you can tell, this is a very Seth list because my number one comes from Majora's Mask. Um, <laughs> so, specifically, we're talking about Majora's Mask 3D. Um, now anybody who's played Majora's Mask knows the sort of like three day time cycle gimmick thing. Um, and there Dawn are a couple of, the of ways day and all that. Yeah. There are a couple of ways to sort of truncate your, your time limit or make it a little bit easier on you. Um, but the, the best way to do it is by doing something called playing the inverted song of time, which is to literally play the song of time backwards. Um, and in the base game, in Majora's Mask for the Nintendo 64, it slows time by like 30% or something like that. Um, but in Majora's Mask 3D, it doubles the length of time that you have. It slows it in half. Um, so literally, to, to me, playing Majora's Mask 3D, having more time is the power in that game. Having twice so, as much time during that cycle is game changing. Yeah. So, you know, the inverted song of time in, in Majora's Mask 3D, specifically doubling the amount of time that you have, um, is, is massive. Um, and you know, you, you, there's also like the song of double time, which does the exact opposite of that. Um, if you need to get to a period of time, you know, more quickly or whatever, but the inverted song of time, like the, I had the idea and I was bummed out when I first read that in the base game I was like, Oh man, like it doesn't actually double it. It, it just kind of, it's like 30 or 40% or something like that. But in Majora's Mask 3D, it does literally double it. And Majora's Mask 3D is the one that kind of turned me around on the game and made it maybe my favorite game of all time. That was a very, very special experience to me. So I, I had to shout it out and um, it was just serendipitous that it actually worked the way I was hoping it did. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Big That's so cool. Yeah, there were so many things that I looked into. I was like, please, please let it be quantifiable. Please. Like I looked into different <laughs> weapons for like Soul Calibur 2 and, and stuff like that. Just like hoping to see that 200% or that like times two or something like that. So that's really right. cool that you and I were both able to find, like I was able to find Lucario and you were able to find like a Majora's Mask thing. That's things so that cool. Makes sense for us, right? Yeah. Well, I'll, uh, I'll go down my list really quickly one more time, then we can shout out some honorable mentions. Uh, my number five, the double cherry from Mario 3D World and Captain Toad. My number four, double attacks from Monster Hunter Stories 2. My number three, war mode from the Ares ship and Cobalt Core. My number two, playing co-op in WarioWare Move It. My number one, the inverted song of time from Majora's Mask 3D. So. Very nice. Very cool. You know, weirdly enough, when it comes to honorable mentions, one that I actually had in my notes has already been shouted out by our chat. Uh, oh, okay. This, yeah. the, this, the, the Super Mushroom from uh, Super Mario Brothers. Again, yep. it's one of the most iconic power-ups of all time, and it does double your capacity to take damage. So, yeah, good call, Bowser. Yeah, good call. <laughs> uh, I messaged you this when I was putting my list together. 
uh, the Ouroboros from Xenoblade, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, so we're in a weird gray area with this. Yeah, because, yeah. It's a really like, weird, yeah. <laughs> because it is the fusion of two characters. So you are doubling your ability. Um, however, the amount of actual power you have as an Ouroboros form is many times more than than two times. So I ended up disqualifying, uh, disqualifying it from my list, but... It was close. I I, I weighed that heavily. <laughs> <laughs> I will say very quickly, the, the double gear system from Mega Man 11 was also mm. something that I considered. Uh, just very quickly, you have in Mega Man 11, there's a mechanic where you have a speed gear and a power gear that you can separately trigger to give yourself, ironically enough, more speed or more power for a very limited amount of time. However, if you're very close to to death you can trigger both of them at the same time you can actually trigger both of your gears to give you a ton of extra speed and a ton of extra power as kind of this comeback mechanic so uh, i did consider the the double gear system i did also really consider sunset riders for this list okay just uh, there's so many awesome arcade shooters out there but Sunset Riders has always had a really soft spot in my heart, as terribly as that game has aged from a sensibility standpoint. Sure. But getting like getting your second gun in dual wielding in Sunset Riders is just such a game changer in that game. I really considered it. It almost made my top five. Yeah. I have a couple quick ones too. Um, the Silver Slingshot from Animal Crossing New Leaf. I kind of miss it when... Animal Crossing tools had quantifiable upgrades like that, where it like straight up, you just fire two slingshots, which makes it twice as easy to hit a balloon or something. Right. So, um, so shout out to that. Another cobalt core thing that I actually thought about was the fracture detection artifact, which makes it so that there is a weak point on every enemy. And if you hit that weak point, you deal double damage. So I I thought about that. And the the last one, honorable mention that I'll shout out real quick. This is not quantifiable at all, but this is just (laughs) such a me thing. Just being able, the fact that you can play Hypnospace Outlaw, which is one of my favorite games, uh, by connecting a mouse and keyboard to your Nintendo Switch, which is how I played it. Double the peripherals. (laughs) Like, I I mean, like, it more than doubles your capabilities in Hypnospace Outlaw to not have to use the stick to move around and, like, use the on-screen keyboard to type. Like, to have my actual USB keyboard plugged into my Switch with a mouse plugged into my Switch and sitting here in my office when I could have just played it on PC like a normal person, the (laughs) fact that I could do that is amazing. So, shout-outs to that. (laughs) <laughs> Very nice. I like that. And again, there are so many different ways that you could take this. I would love to see again, all already the people in the chat, their gears are already turning. I would love to hear what other yes. people's top fives are, what your favorite times you reached 200% power capability, swim speed, uh, 200% whatever in whatever your favorite game is. I would love to hear what your list is. Um, but, you know, obviously, Seth and I both wanted to have indie representation on our list because indie games are so incredibly important to us and have always been for this show. Going back to episode one. Going back to literally the first episode of this show uh, where we, we you know, integrated the idea of the indie showcase. I think back then we called it Indie Spotlight for I a think few so. episodes. We, we waffled kind of back. I'm sorry. We... Uh, <laughs> We, uh, we French toasted back we and French forth. We French toasted. <laughs> back and forth yeah. a couple times on what we were actually going to call it, but it eventually just kind of stuck with Indie Showcase. That's right. And and as you, you mentioned earlier in the episode, you know, our, our first ever guest on the show, literally on episode one, Greg Labanov, um, the creator of games like Wander Song and Chicory, um, you know, he is, he and his games are an important part of this show's DNA. Cool. Um, so we wanted to make sure that, um, that we kind of honored him and his contribution and the fact that, yeah, he gave us the time of day when we were nobody. Um, and so we, uh, shout outs to Drew here in the chat. Let's go Drew French toast is the best. Let's go, baby. Um, we wanted to, you know, when it came to episode 100, we had Greg back to again, honor the history of the show. And it wouldn't be episode 200 without him coming back for this one, too. So we do have a, a great indie showcase for y'all. Eric and I, if you're watching us on the stream, we are going to fade away and reappear 
uh, in this interview indie showcase with with Greg. So let's check in with Greg in this week's indie showcase. All right, dear listeners, we have got a special all in episode 200 treat for you uh, coming back to the show. Our very first guest ever on this show, all the way back from June of 2020, we had this person on our show and uh, came back for episode 100 and it wouldn't be a proper episode 200 without having him back to join the festivities. So please welcome back to the show. Uh, the one and only Greg Lobanov. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Welcome back. Well, thank you. Thank you for the warm welcome. Yeah, and of th- course. Thanks for having me back on. I'm uh, honored, honored to be here again. I feel like uh, I feel like it's such a weird choice to pick me as your like I don't know your your game designer that you bring back like your every hundred one like I don't know it's, I don't <laughs> it feels like a random choice. <laughs> well, no. I mean, you, you look at it. You look at your career over the past several years, and uh, it's just kind of been. I mean, obviously, you are kind of just deeply ingrained into the DNA of our show at this point anyway, but the the games that you've put out over the past several years have, I mean, in and of themselves been far and away worth 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 talking about and we're really excited we talked about Wonder Song at length the first time you were on. We got to talk about uh, chicory uh, on episode 100, which we were super excited about. and now this time you have another forthcoming game which you uh, i think uh inadvertently somewhat subconsciously <laughs> teased the, the last time you spoke do us. you remember that uh, <laughs> I, I had i had kind of forgotten until but i did i did see you post a link to it and i was pretty blown away by how candid i was at the time or it's just yeah <laughs> uh, so good yeah <laughs> Don't know if that'll ever happen again. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was just funny because I, I I when when Beastie Ball was first announced, I was like, this sounds familiar. And I was like, let me go back. I went back and listened to to that original interview that we had done with you on episode one, and sure enough, man, like it, it's it's funny because like um, it's not a random choice, you know. Like like you were there from the very beginning. You gave us the time of day when we were nobody, and we were always going to be appreciative of that. And um, it was you're also the first person like every indie showcase interview that we've ever done with an independent developer has been asked the same question that you got asked in episode one, which is like that whole, if you could develop a game around a Nintendo IP, what would it be? And you answered Pokemon, but you were like, but what if Pokemon had this kind of like nonviolent way of battling, like with volleyball, (laughs) for example, you know? And Mm -hmm. so it's a crucial part of, of the show's DNA and, you know, Hey, maybe we got a little bit of a sneak peek at Beastie ball, you know, four (laughs) years ago. It's cool that you thought about it that long ago. <laughs> I it had, I've been sitting on that idea for a long time, like playing around with it, and even like getting um like the start of Beastie Ball. I wasn't even thinking about Pokemon necessarily. I was thinking about right. like, just the sports RPG, and then the Pokemon. I mean, I guess obviously had been sitting there, so like it was going to happen, but it wasn't like I yeah, <laughs> it wasn't like I started there. Yeah. yeah, but for for those who may not be familiar. Uh, like kind of what is Beastie Ball? What is this new sports themed RPG that you're cooking up over there right now? So yeah, Beastie Ball is a turn based volleyball RPG where you coach a sports team of monsters. Uh, you're, in, you're in a ranked sports league uh, for four monsters. It's called Beastie Ball. It's the name of the sport in this world. Beastie Ball uh, is like an ecologically significant thing that these animals are like evolved to do. They just play sports naturally, and then humans have constructed this like awesome sports league around this thing and they they compete in it against each other um that's that's the that's the gist of it yeah that's the that's the elevator pitch it's a it's cool it's um it's an interesting i think lens to put this all through and i mean not only so you you have bc ball as your as your big new project you've also kind of taken the opportunity to kind of like I, I don't know how how seriously you, you think of it, but you, you've kind of like formed a studio for the first time with Wishes yeah. Unlimited, which I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it sounded like the founding of it was basically just let's formalize kind of like what we've all always been doing, just making games together as friends. Yeah, that's about right. Um, there are, I would say, like there are some like Beastie Ball as a project has it's it's been it's quite different from the last couple the actually any any that I've done before, and so that also mm-hmm. necessitated like some changes in in philosophy, and then 
that case cascaded down to I think we need like a different format. Like it wouldn't be fair if we put this game out and people thought it was just me on it, you know, because there's right. so many small parts that are coming from other people now. Yeah. So yeah, yeah different different approach to it. But yeah, yeah it, it kind of we kind of landed here naturally, you know, it grew really organically from you know the process that we had from the previous game. So it doesn't, I don't know, yeah, it, it doesn't actually feel that different, but it's it's like weird. It's like at some point you're like, this is different. I don't know when it got different, but it's different now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, yeah. So is it is it that same core team? Have you added new people into the mix? Who who's the team here? Core core team is identical to Chicory almost. It's me and Alexis, uh, Lena who does music, and then yeah. M. Halberstadt yep. doing doing audio, um, and then Preston Wright who worked on Chicory's audio is doing a larger role in the audio in in Beastie Ball, but effectively same like core team. What's different is that. There's a lot of people who have been brought in to do small roles. I'm a lot of concept artists that are helping us creatures. Um, so like there's like the one from Poland named Torda. There's one from Maryland named Harlow. One from Mexico named Karen. Ivan from Brazil and uh, wow. Tori from California. That's and, true international effort. Yeah, we've got people from all over the place. And I think I actually, I have to go through the list in my head, but I definitely <laughs> forgot at least one or two. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of people coming and help us out. We hired a full-time animator who's helping us animate the creatures. We have a character artist who's doing human character art. Um, and uh, yeah, we are working with Clay as a publisher, which is different. And then Cl from Clay, there's like a th person who's doing 3D models for the game, which is different. Yeah. And like, we have also like uh, my friend, Ben, who made a game called Cobalt Core, which is pretty yes. popular, but he's also yeah, working with us. Cobalt Core, yeah. Good taste. <laughs> um, but he's, he's on the team as like a server programmer because we have networking like stuff in the game. Yeah. It's, it's funny too. Well, I mean, so it's, so it's a lot of people, but then also most of them only work on the game like once a month, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> sometimes for some of them. Um, so, uh, so there's, there's a pretty big range in how much actually people contribute or how much they're kind of like, I don't know. Yeah. Like core, core team is even like, it's kind of nebulous. Cause it's like people like me who work on the game every single day all the time and then there's some people who work on the game maybe once a week and then once every other week and then you know it gets yeah fuzzier and fuzzier um well, does it does it feel like a bigger production than wander song was than chicory was oh does absolutely it, yeah. yeah so you you are feeling that as opposed to just you know going in and working on your game you feel this this notion of kind of needing to i don't want to say necessarily wrangle a team but <laughs> you know this is much more of a uh, of uh, of a collaborative, much more of a team effort, and and a bigger just production in general than your previous games. Yeah, that's it's that's fair to say. The, the, the way that we got here was um, so Wandersong and Chikri both were uh, the project was designed around what our skill set was. So it's like it basically it's like it's just me. I'm making this game by myself. Here's the things that I can do. A list of four things, skills I have, and the game is going to be exactly those skills, and I'll learn like one new thing, uh, you know. And so, and that, and so, it's like if I was one do something for the game, it's like oh, I don't know how to do that, then that wouldn't be in the game. That's it. That's what the, you know, right? That's how we would decide things. And Chicory was the same. The team got a little bit bigger. Um, we had Madeline working on Chicory, that who did all the um, environment art, Madeline Berger. Um, so they're not working on Beastie Ball, but that's like one so one difference. But anyway, so like, all of us are friends working together. Here's what we can do. And the game was planned around, okay, like here's the things you enjoy doing. We'll just make that. This game, um, we started it like with a very big pie in the sky idea. Like there is a game that should be like this, like that the game exactly with these parameters that should exist. And we're going to try to make that game. Um, and that is actually really fundamentally different from what we were doing before because suddenly there were all these things that we like, knew that we needed to have in the game um, that we and then learned that we couldn't do all those things. And so that's where a lot of the extra people who were helping us came in because it's like, okay, well, we need someone who is skilled at 3D modeling. Like we don't have that skill. And I tried to learn it and I made a bunch of 3D models that were not very good. And we were like, <laughs> we need someone better to do that. So, okay, we need a 3D modeler. And then it's like, okay, well, we need X, just some number of creatures that have to be fully hand animated. Uh, it turns out it takes a long time and we just cannot do it all with one animator. So we need a second animator, you know? Yeah. So every, and every, so every step was like that. It was like, okay, well, I guess we need one person to help with this thing. And uh, we need someone to help with that thing. There's, but there's, there still is that feeling of like, um, like, I don't feel like I'm wrangling a team. It's not like we're, I don't know, but it's not like we have like big team meetings or anything. Like it's, it's sure. still very centralized in the, you know, in the sense that me and Alexis are basically planning everything. Um, and like, I'm like, at the end of the day, every asset that gets made, like, I have to put it into the game. I'm giving feedback on everything. Like, I'm still 
kind of involved in every step of the process and telling everyone like I don't know but yeah so it it, it it's not exactly like a huge team project you know like because I, yeah. I know what those look like yeah but it's not small but it's different <laughs> in the fact that yeah. your previous games were kind of limited by the wheelhouse of the people working on them yes. whereas now you've gotten to the point where you can say hey our game needs to have this let's actively go find somebody who can fill that role yeah, totally. Yeah, and that part of that's because Chikri did so well. That's the big difference. Like Wander Song was kind of just barely, and then Chikri was like, "Oh, okay, now suddenly I could hire someone to do this if I wanted to." Yeah. So being on the short <laughs> list of the vast majority of publications indie game of the year lists, so we'll tend to do that. But it, <laughs> but but in terms of like financials, it it sold well for you guys. Yeah, very 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 well. Um, like I mean, we're we're a very small team, so our needs were pretty low. Mm -hmm. Um, and so yeah, compared to like what we what it took to make that game, it did it did really really well for us. And now we're kind of like getting to be oh yeah yeah we're very comfortable we're very comfortable awesome. getting to kind of pick and choose yeah getting to bring more people in and 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 yeah help help grow like yeah more more talents with us, which is which is exciting to get to do with that yeah. Yes, that's awesome. It's cool to see. And y'all uh, went back to Kickstarter for, for this one and um, had to, you know, instantly I was like, yeah, done. Uh, yeah. Say less. <laughs> <laughs> if if if, uh, if you guys are, are doing a Kickstarter, I am supporting it. Um, what was the success of that like for you? And, and how has that kind of, you know, improved the situation even more for development? Um, yeah, I mean, like, I guess, like, so I've done so many Kickstarters, and mm -hmm. I, honestly, yeah, when we, before we were, there were a long time working this project where I was like, I don't know if I'm going to do Kickstarter or not, but then when it came to announce it, um, I just don't know how else to announce a game anymore. Like, I just don't know what you do. <laughs> like, uh, we're not, we're, and we're also not, not quite at the point where we could do, like, a big Nintendo Direct or something, like, guaranteed, mm. right? Like, you know, we're sort of just looking for, like, how do we announce a game in, like, the biggest, showiest way possible, and a Kickstarter made sense i mean and also just i enjoy it so yeah i don't know it, it was kind of <laughs> but there are a lot of reasons that's because it's like yeah like we we like didn't need to do the kickstarter we could have figured stuff out without it we have other options so that was like part of why it was like ah like is it but yeah i mean it, like it's exciting it's exciting to get to finally talk about the game especially a game like this that it's very spoilable and in mm. a lot of contexts like it's hard to talk about sometimes um or like find reasons to talk about things but a kickstarter gives us like a built-in audience of people that are already kind of like in on it and excited so i get to talk to them and kind of share inside like information stuff about the project which is just fun for me um and i just work really well in that i don't know i, I guess i do well with the, the pressure because i know a lot of other people with in a kickstarter context it's like it like hurts their process a little bit, but for mm. us, it's like, I don't know, I find it energizing. So yeah, I like, I like having people like, yeah, I don't know, having this audience of people that are interested in the project. And that's kind of what's most exciting for me about it and getting to make all the merch for it and stuff too. Yes. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, very fun. About when it comes to the merch, I have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> As Eric holds up yeah. his, his barred plushie. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, um, but is this something that you guys are thinking about, like in terms of the merch, like on the ground floor of Beastie Ball, like as it's in development, this isn't an after the fact kind of thing where it's like, well, now that the game's out and we have some measure of notoriety and some measure of traction with it, with Beastie Ball, this is part of the strategy going in with the development of the game concurrently? To do to do merchandise, you mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, honestly, no, that's cause that's the other thing. Cause the Kickstarter is like a safe way to do merchandise. You're like, okay, mm -hmm. people already bought this and they don't mind waiting for me to make it. So it's cool to like not have an order ready, find how many people want it and then make it for them. Um, mm -hmm. that's, that's what's nice about it. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still a pretty cagey and conservative when it comes to like how we spend our money on stuff. Like I, I mean, I'm <laughs> so all the money, yeah, all the research that we have, like we're putting towards making the game better, paying the team and then making sure we just have lots left over so that, you know, if like 10 economic crises happen between <laughs> now and game release, like we'll still be able to, to survive and, and release a game. Um, what are you talking about? The industry is doing amazing right now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so I'm, I'm not doing any, doing anything too, too crazy, um, when it comes to merch right now, but we, I mean, we have a very, I think we have a, we have a long-term plan like that, in, that includes like after, you know, we're going to try to release the game this year and then there's going to be a whole lot of stuff that happens for a long time after that. I would say more like more so than with the last couple games, like Chicory and Wander Song, both through like very short story games with a very clear end. And it's like, okay, that's the whole game. It's done. And mm -hmm. pretty much I was like, okay, done forever. Never coming back to this. <laughs> this game, it's like, 
we are going to keep on living on this for a while. We're going to add more stuff to it. We're going to do merchandise. We already like the Kickstarter, you know, we already promised like we're going to do some post game stuff for it. Yep. So there's, yeah, there's going to be a lot of, of stuff to do on it for a while. And that's kind of more how I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's cool to hear. Cause I, I think, you know, there, there are a lot of people I'm, I'm sure when, when you finish something like Wander Song or Chicory is like, where's, chicory too or whatever and it's like well like you know i kind of said what i wanted to say there and i'm not you know i love those characters i love that world but it's not something i i would rather and i think you even said this last time we had john like i would rather do something new so it is mm -hmm. cool to see something that you and the team are energized by that you're willing to kind of like stay in that lane for a little while and I, i'm i'm curious because i mean i'm sure for you i'm sure you've got a million you know, ideas that have cropped up. Like, what was it about BC Ball that, you know, like you said, you've been sitting on this for, for a long time. What made this like the idea that was like, this is the one that we do now after Chicory? Uh, I, well, okay. So I'm actually not the kind of person who has a, a ton of different ideas. Um, okay. Yeah, I know that this, that this makes me again different from a lot of other people I know who work in, in games, but I'm, I, I kind of, the way I live is like, uh, if I'm working on something and I have like a really cool, weird, out there idea, usually I try to find a way to incorporate that weird, out there thing into what I'm doing already. Um, mm. A good example, which I was tweeting about this week, is like I played Balatro, uh, which is this <laughs> awesome roguelike. Yeah. So and then I was like, good. man, I really <laughs> wish I could make a roguelike. And then I decided to just put one into, into our into Beastie Ball. So we just there's a roguelike in the game now, um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> which is a thing I can do. You know, it's yeah. like a thing that I'm, I'm allowed to do. Um, and yeah, so I, like so there's that. And then I think like what made this game different from the last ones, like why I feel more excited to commit to it. For one thing, it's an idea that I was sitting on since like before wander song like i have been wanting to make this this game for a while like not knowing all the exact details but definitely having like a clear picture in my head of like what the vibe was going to be um so i'm like it's already been sitting with me for so long like i'm not worried about running out of steam on it um and i think another thing that makes this game really different from those last couple games is that it is a way more um like uh design like the the, the design of the game the kind of the gameplay design of it mm -hmm. is way more core to the experience where wander song and chicory both have a kind of a balance of um like if you don't like the story for those games you don't like those games that's basically sure. like i put a lot of work to try to make them really fun to play and all this stuff but basically like the experience totally rides on the story beastie ball has a story that i care a lot about but i think it's going to be true that some people are going to not like the story and then still want to play the game a lot because it's really fun right. um, and just like skip, like not even care about like what the characters are doing. And that's fine. You know, like that's, that's fair. Um, but what that means too, is that like, there's just a lot of, there are a lot of like really cool gears in this machine. Like a lot of things that I can remix and recombine and move around. And like, there's just way more stuff to explore and play in it because it's not just about character writing and development and story arcs and stuff. There's also just like, a roguelike mode that you could go play forever and ever, you know, like, <laughs> and, and, and like lots of different creatures that you could, you know, recruit to your team and we can always add more of those. And like, that doesn't have to have a story context. You can just add more stuff to the game, you know, like in lots of different little piles that add more things for people to do. So it, it just, it, it has a really good, I don't know. Yeah. It works really well with that kind of design. You know, there was a game I did um, many, like I made a game called coin crypt. This is before wander yep. Yep. Yeah. It's an early access roguelike on Steam, and I really loved um, working in that context. Like having a game that just has a million pieces that are shuffling around, and I'm just adding more stuff to the game. Like I was some of the most fun I had working on stuff, and like having an audience already there. Like very much like you know what I talked about, like why I like Kickstarter, right? It's like I just like getting to make stuff and put it out there and watch people play it. Like I'm sick of making secret projects and not getting to talk about it, you know? So mm -hmm. <laughs> it'll be really, for me, it'd be really fun. Like when I get to put this, this game working on right now, put it out and then even just keep working on, on this one and still have more ideas and, you know, get people to be able to talk about and share ideas and kind of put their ideas in the game. And I don't know. Yeah. Like Chicory and Water Song, we're not good fits for that type of process, but this game is. So I'm, um, yeah. I mean, as you can tell, I'm really excited about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Palatro... <laughs> Bellatro, we saw you on Twitter over the past week, and Bellatro was absolutely something that we we did want to bring up. But but you're saying like the, this this roguelike idea, this is something you are moving forward with in Beastie Ball. Yeah, it's in it's in there for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's way too fun. Yeah, I mean, to, like I was I I was already thinking about doing something like this. Um, yeah. 
but I was kind of like, ah, I'll do it. Like, it'll be one of those things we do after the game is out. You know, there's a whole list. There's a whole list of things that are in that yeah. category. And there are so many other things on the list that I'm still like, really want to do. Um, but this was one that I just like, I, I had too many things spinning around in my head after playing that game. And I like, I had the time. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of ahead on other stuff. And I'll just try. I'll give myself a couple a days. <laughs> as a treat. It was. It was as a treat. Like, I would, I'll do this. And if it's not fun, no big deal. You know, like, we'll just let it sit for a while. But it was, like, really fun in the first, like, two hours that I was working on this. And then it was, like, after a couple of days, I was like, well, it's it's finished. I mean, I just literally, like, it's in the game now. So Well, there you okay. go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, want, I wanted to ask specifically, is that something that you find kind of happens to you uh, throughout the development process of these games? Is that something that, like, several times during Chicory, several times during Wander Song, you'll play another game and you'll kind of get that same itch or is this kind of a new concept is this something that hasn't really happened to you before uh there are totally things there are there are lots of no i think there are lots of things like that like um like in wander song there's like that the the witch city you go to where you like learn different songs to unlock areas like that definitely happened because i played hollow knight like while i was working on wander song (laughs) i was like oh man metroidvanias are really cool what if i like just kind of stuff run in here somewhere you know um so yeah, like a lot of a lot of like weird little one-off ideas or gimmicks that happen in a lot of my games. It's I mean, I mean I you know I have original ideas too, but oh, sometimes yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's just like I'm I'm really on fire about something cool that I just saw recently. I just want to like find a way to squeeze that in, and it's um I mean there's there's like this is like a meme like if you if for people who like work on a really big game you know it's like oh game designer played yeah. Elden Ring over the weekend and I guess you're making an open world game you know like that's totally yeah. so I have that problem it's not it's not just me <laughs> um but yeah it's it's totally a, a thing that I do um and I mean to me like I think it like the, the fact that we get a I get away with it and I think that's one of the joys of making these kind of like you know small team project things that are very we're very flexible and like you know, I myself can design and program and art a whole bunch of stuff really fast without having to like collaborate or derail the rest of the team's week. You know, like nothing, nothing in this project got you know like ruined by me making this roguelike. Like everyone on the team, everybody stop and do this now. You know, <laughs> right, right? Yeah. So I didn't. I don't. I don't have to do that on this team, right? Because I don't need them. I can. I can. I can just like disappear for a couple of days and be like. I'm making a roguelike and then come back and like, there's a roguelike in the game now, you know, <laughs> and all this stuff that you're all doing, it's all great. It's all going to contribute to this and you don't, don't even think about it, but it's just, just so you know, there's that's here now too, you know? Yeah. This is a thing that also exists now. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that you have that kind of freedom. I, I love that you can just kind of do that and make, and make the game how you want. You, you brought it up very Iwata esque <laughs> a little, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, there, there you go. You can put that I- Iwata esque Greg Lebanov. Um, <laughs> that's I, that's I, the behander. I, <laughs> I got to bring up Coin Crypt because you mentioned mm. Coin Crypt. You you, you mentioned um, Cobalt Core. I mm. I saw this. Um, I think it was when Cobalt Core was coming out, and mm. like somebody had made the point, like Coin Crypt is like technically the first like deck building roguelike that was like published like is that true like did you yeah come up with that like subgenre? genre <laughs> yeah that a te- thing? technically <laughs> technically i did yeah i mean i don't think uh i mean there's there's kind of so there's there's another game called dream quest that happened mm-hmm. like a few months later and i think a lot more people played that one so that one kind of became like the the wellspring of inspiration for a lot of other bigger games that followed like i think slay the spire they were probably thinking about Dream Quest way more than they were thinking about Coin Crypt. But sure. I know they thought about Coin Crypt too. Like I, I met them and they did. They had played it, so <laughs> it wasn't zero. But uh, anyway, yeah. So te- technically, technically, I mean, I, I would say um, it's more like um, you know, I don't even remember, this. You know, you know, how, like Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone, but there's like some other guy who also invented the telephone. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm like that other guy. That's that's basically <laughs> <Right>. like. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I just, I saw that, that floating around. I was like, what? Like, like Greg came up with this whole, so that's, that's nuts to me. I just had to, I had to bring that up for people who sometime, uh, who somehow didn't know that. Um, and then like, it's, it's kind of a full circle moment because Bellatro is kind of that. And now that's kind of inspiring some stuff in Beastie Ball. So I just thought that was sure. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I love, I love that genre. Like, I think it's really, really cool. I mean, yeah. I also, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I like lots of games in that genre, not just Bollocho. It was just that that was the one. I don't know. Just hit me at the right time, right place. Totally. That was my. I was ready. It's all it needs to. <laughs> it's all it needs to do. You know. Just, yeah. 
inspiration beginning inspiration um mm -hmm. i am i am really interested to know especially when it comes to independent sports games you know you don't really see a lot of indie devs out there who are like super like go team sports ball and all this type of stuff are you a big sports <laughs> fan yourself or no although i am learning to become one now thanks to this game um yeah i think it i it, i hadn't really thought about like um yeah, you know, there's a lot there. <laughs> like, uh, I this is I feel stupid to even say it now, but I'll, you know, like when I was thinking about this game, um, I was imagining like, like maybe this has, this game is a shot of being like really popular because a lot of people like sports. Like, I don't like sports, but a lot of people like sports, um, and a lot of people like like lots of monsters. And if I just put those together, like all the sports people and all the little guys people will like get together and it'll be like the economy is going to restructure itself around how successful this game <laughs> is going to be. I imagine like imagine Super Bowl multiplied by Pokemon. Right. I mean, that's totally. just what, that's my target audience. But in, in, in reality, it's like, no, the combination of these things is so strange and niche and has such a strange specific personality to it. Like, like it's, it's like, it's basically, yeah, I mean, it, it feels like Chicory or Wonder Song again, you know, like, it's just, it's just this, it's like, this is this weird flavor of things that I make. Like in my head, I was like, oh, like, I think I've really broken out of my box now. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm going somewhere really weird and, and I'm going to get like a weird new audience of people, but it's like, no, it's just people like Chicory again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, so that happened, but I have like really learned a lot of appreciation for, for sports from working on this game. Um, and from talking to people who like, like we've had some testers who've been playing the game a lot too. And like the responses to it has been really positive, and really interesting. Cause like I get, it's like, it, it, like people have said to me that they, it has this feeling that they're in the game is sort of like, like taking ownership of sports culture and kind of making it like weird and like nerdy and like queer and animally and just like doing all this stuff with it that kind of suddenly makes it feel like a welcoming space for people that like, you know, like a lot of people who like, are, yeah, like, like people are moderns in our discord have mentioned this. They're like, oh, you know, when I was growing up in high school, like I hated sports and like seeing a game about sports gives me like this like repulsive physical response it's like oh not for mm -hmm. me not for me not my kind of game but then playing it it's like oh wow like suddenly i feel welcome in a way that i'd never felt before in this space and it's like almost makes the game better because it's like doing this weird cool thing for me like opening my mind to stuff i don't know i'm, I'm repeating someone else's words but i'll say that for me like it there isn't there is an experience kind of like that where i don't know yeah i'm getting to like turn these, I don't know, this, this, this huge cultural thing into something that I don't know, resonates with me. Like I'm learning like the angles on it that I really am excited about what I enjoy and finding ways to elevate that. I don't know. Yeah. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, and yeah, I mean now, now I, I, I coach like a volleyball team in real life. Like I run the Is that game right? developer. Uh, well, uh, the war I, co I, I run the worst volleyball team in, in like the <laughs> league here in Vancouver. Um, uh, it's like all game developers, you know, and we're just doing our best. Or I would say, or no, we used to be the worst. Now we're the second worst. So we, mm. we jumped up a spot, which was a pretty big deal for us. Let's go. We've won, yeah. we've won a game or two. This so. is a biopic waiting to happen, Greg. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. It's uh, so cool. I, I was kind of curious. I mean, I What's guess the team name, the big bads, the, the big, big bads. bads. I yeah. love that so much. <laughs> Let's go. That's awesome. Yeah. I was, I was kind of curious. Is that was the, like doing that, was that just like part of the research? Like, yeah, we're making a volleyball game. We should probably know a thing or two about volleyball. <laughs> yes, it was. Well, yeah. So I, I started yeah getting into researching volleyball stuff. I also just started reading like sports news and watching sports documentaries, which there have been a huge treasure trove of like in oh, the yes. last few years in the pandemic and stuff. So not just me, but I mean, it's lucky for me because I was already interested in, in kind of exploring that stuff. Um, yeah, it's yeah. Another thing that's weird and funny about this game is like um, it's like Wander Song, game about music. That's how it started. Chicory game about art. That's how it started. So and I was like, okay, cool. These are huge, broad subjects with like a million things going on. But you know, I have my own perspective on them. I can deliver a really clear story and like come up with some characters and kind of like tell do something fun in that space. So coming to BC, I was like, okay, game about sports. See, you know, I've done this before. Okay, sure, big subject, but I have, you know, I have, I have my thoughts on this. And I, once I started actually like learning about it, it's like so overwhelmingly so much bigger than the other two games like combined 
Like, sports is crazy. Yeah. Did you know that sports is crazy? Like, <laughs> yeah. every day things happen that are mind-boggling, that are, like, so wild that I could not make it up. And I was really struggling. It was, like, one of the biggest struggles on this, like, this story was, like, picking one angle, like, picking, like, just one thing to do with it, you know? Like, <laughs> every documentary, every, like, movie I watch, I'm like, man, like, how do I fit that into this game? Like, how do I talk about <laughs> this like when is this ever gonna you know like I, i'm I, yeah it's 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 a, it's a, definitely a struggle definitely a struggle an interesting struggle um but yeah like I, sports is huge it's huge and like i'm i'm still kind of finding weird exciting like angles on it to to try to talk about and fit into this game yeah yeah well athletic achievement has created a lot of you know just amazing human interest and underdog stories for for so long i mean i've like i've got box sets of espn 30 for 30 documentaries there's just so many really cool and interesting human stories there you know kind of at the core of of all of this athletic achievement but you know at the center of it is this game this game Mm -hmm. that humans created that humans created rules for and that can be modified to be even more wild, more wacky, and more entertaining within the context of interactive entertainment. Totally. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If anything, like this has become a game about game design on some level, right? Because that's that's kind of what it, that's kind of what sports is 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 just game design, <laughs> which is like I didn't really totally. I mean, like sort of knew that, but like I really feel that now in, in my bones, like the 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 way that that yeah that those things are all interacting with each other. And yeah, it's just deeply, deeply interesting. I mean, I'm, I love this stuff. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. It's, it's so cool to see. I, uh, I, I, I think that there's certainly, you know, Eric brought up like the, the athletic achievement, but also like the camaraderie, the overcoming odds that is so baked in, you know, to, to all of it, I think makes perfect sense for an RPG like this. And I know, you know, obviously we're still not able to talk about a lot of stuff with Beastie Ball. We'll have to have you back when the game actually comes out. Um, maybe we won't wait a hundred episodes to do it this time. <laughs> um, but what, like tonally, can you say kind of what some of the tonal inspirations were? I saw in your Day of the Devs video, couldn't help but notice the Haikyuu manga uh, in the video. So I'm like, cool, Haikyuu, we're there. Um, but are there any other kind of like tonal touchstones that you could maybe that we can kind of expect to, to feel in Beastie Ball? Uh, Speed Racer, the the Wachowski film. Um, was a, was, so was underrated. A- <laughs> That's so underrated. It's very, very good. Yeah, and that was that was a really big one for us early on. Um, and then from there, it gets pretty like, uh, hmm, yeah. There's there's like there's like uh, I mean like like I watched that F one documentary Drive to Survive. There are definitely some really specific flavors from that that have wound their way up into this. I would say, but like like yeah, sports anime like Haikyuu, um yeah. or like like some of the bigger stuff. But I also got really into uh, Slam Dunk like during the pandemic uh that's also like i don't know yeah and and i grew up on prince of tennis like that was something that i've been sitting with for a long time yeah so like yeah stories like that are all really big in here i think it does have a lot of that kind of chicory wander song i mean obviously because like we're we're working on it um i feel like you would feel that that kind of flavor and influence here like present as well um like you know put through a sporty filter (laughs) <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, I mean, just a lot, a lot of little things, like a lot of tiny things that I'm, I'm almost like, I don't even want to mention cause you'll, you'll see it when you see it, but oh yeah, <laughs> speed, speed racer is the fun one. I think that one, that one actually really helped me to shape this, this story from early on, like to figure out like what, where I wanted to go with it. Interesting. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, we, we can't wait. You, you were talking about, um, your, the aim is for, for this year. It sounds like. Yes. Nice. definitely this year awesome i like no matter what no like i, I i'm gonna release something I'm, I'm like not gonna let myself not release something that's that's where i'm at right now so nice. yeah cool yeah, like, well, I, uh, yeah oh sorry go ahead i mean just because i just i have mentioned that you know it's that kind of game that you can just do stuff in forever so i'm yeah. mm-hmm. if i don't if i don't stop myself then i will like there's no reason i would ever stop so i'm just like this year, right? No matter what, that's what yeah. I'm saying. You're gonna <laughs> yeah. find it. You're gonna find a 1.0. Yeah, it's gonna. It's there. I mean, it's it's basically there now, and I'm I'm already kind of in the like, just doing more. I'm adding roguelikes and stuff, and you know, like so. <laughs> it'll, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This year for sure. Awesome. But any, I mean, you talk about wanting to add a whole bunch of stuff, uh, like as something like a, a season pass or, or paid. 
How are you approaching stuff uh, like that? Uh, you know, we haven't, I mean, I guess I can't, I won't, I won't, I don't, I, I don't like season passes. I'll, I'll say that. I don't, I don't think I want to do something like that. Um, but I mean, I haven't worked with, uh, like the, the most I've ever done with post views content in the past was in, with coin did a DLC yeah. for, mm-hmm. a year after the game came out. Yep. That felt, that felt pretty good. Um, nowadays I think there's actually, it's more normal for a lot of games to do free updates. I actually, and I'll be honest, I don't understand like how that makes sense. Um, right. but I like it like, you know, from like, from a, you know, just like from a creator player, you know, point of view, I think it's cool to make stuff for players for free. Um, you know, if like, I guess I just don't know how, like on the financial, you know, as long as you're paying the people working in the game and stuff, then I guess that's cool. Right. Um, so I guess some things are probably just going to depend on how well the game is doing and what our plans, you know, how many people work in the game, how, how are we paying them and, and what do we want to do and how big is the audience and stuff like that. Right. But, uh, I think, you know, my, my hope is that like, we'll sell copies of the game and that should be enough that we can make plans kind of based around what those sales do for, you know, without, without trying to monetize like lots more, um, I don't know. Yeah. Like no like $5 pass. beastie ball skins or anything. Like no, that. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, I don't, I, I can imagine, I can imagine, um, cause okay, we're working with, with Clay on this. Um, and like for, as a publisher, like they're not really doing a lot of development stuff, but Clay has a lot of experience on like don't starve and oxygen not included, like games that are, that are kind of more on the live service and other things. Uh, mm-hmm. and they have a really good relationship with their community. And I know they do some monetized stuff that has done really well for them and like, has like, you know, like has not upset their community. Um, so I, you know, I guess I'm just not going to promise anything out, but I kind of want to talk to them and like, let, like use their wisdom to like decide like, you know, Hey, like what makes sense for us? What do you think would work? And what do you think are going to make people happy? And obviously I'll also be in contact with, yeah, people playing the game. Like I am, I am thinking about this as like a game that is going to sit around and hopefully like have a community that, you know, like, like, you know, it's, is self uh, sufficient, you know, like people come in and play the game and like, can you communicate with each other and share stuff and play online and whatever. Um, so that's how I'm thinking about it. And I'm wanting to look at like the most, you know, the nicest ecosystem I can make to support that type of player base. How do we um, keep the lights on, but hopefully still make people happy? Yeah. Yeah. So that was a lot of, that was a lot of words to say. I don't know, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to like figure this stuff out. Like I'm excited to like do the best version of this that I I can do, you know. And I'm mostly excited just to make a cool video game. Like that's actually what I'm excited for. Everything else yeah. is just like building the structure to make the making the video game part be healthy and fun and make it help us make more stuff to to, to make the people play the stuff that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. And, and Lena's awesome. back on music again. Yeah, she sure is. She just gave us a new boss track today. Uh, that's Ooh. amazing. Yeah um yeah we yeah working with her again really really fun the sound on this game is quite different i mean we so we've put a demo out and uh if you've played that then you've already kind of heard sort of the the palette of the game um and then even from like that kind of what's in the demo it goes to some strange places (laughs) uh that i am very excited for people to see uh yeah yeah that's awesome yeah you can't wait. Is it um so when when y'all launch? I don't. I, you're probably not even allowed to say, but I'll just ask it. Um, yeah. Are you are you guys thinking is PC kind of the the launch focus, or are we looking at like a multi platform launch or switch coming later down the road? Um, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not saying no to anything right now. Right. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, right now we're just talking about PC and Mac. Um, right, and then. Yeah, it's other other stuff as 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 it becomes relevant. Yeah, nice. I mean, there's also, I mean, like, yeah, like okay, like you, you know, there's that rumor about like the new Switch that's coming out, right? Right. So that, that's 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 a really good example of a reason why it would be really stupid of me right now to say like, oh, we're definitely going to come out on Switch when it's like, well, maybe by the time I'm ready to even start working on that, there's a Switch too, <laughs> right. and then I would be, I would have been foolish to say that I would do, you know, one not the other, right? So. That's why it's like okay, we're, we're this is like we're working on PC and Mac, and then we're you know <laughs> whatever comes comes. Yeah, 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 right. Totally, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's what I figured, but I just wanted to verify because um, you know we got a lot of hungry Nintendo fans out there that I'm sure are waiting to you know to play this. So I'm I'm looking forward to it either way. I uh, you know this is there there are a few I, I normally kind of wait for Switch ports on a lot mm-hmm. of stuff, but but with your stuff, it's like I'm playing this as early as I can. Yeah. <laughs> as early as I can get away with. So 
Yeah, I can't wait. Later awesome. this year, BC Ball, yes. everybody uh, look forward to it. Is there any way um, that folks can, like, what's the best way for folks to support? If they miss out on the Kickstarter, is there any, like, good way for folks to kind of show their support leading up to launch? Uh, our favorite thing right now, so we, we run a newsletter now um, for the game, uh, mm-hmm. and that's, uh, uh, like, yeah, if you go to, like, my website, like, greg.style, I think that's the easiest way to find it. Um, that newsletter is great because we do development updates. I have one going out tomorrow that's, like, uh, like kind of behind-the-scenes stuff on the game and our game design stuff, and then also updates on, on the project. And, yeah, the newsletter is just nice because that kind of, like, if you want to follow our projects, if you're, like, excited about what we're doing, um, that's kind of where we announce everything I think that's going to be relevant for us going forward. And that is going to live for a lot longer than I think any of the social media stuff that seems to come right. and go, like <laughs> sands <laughs> on the beach. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, and I get, you know, if we ever, for example, like if we do more merch stuff, if we get more like plushes, like I think there's a good chance that from our Kickstarter, like we made, we made plush to the Kickstarter. I think there's going to be some extras. Yeah. Um, so like if you're interested in, in flying stuff like that, like that's where you would uh, get, get that information like most expediently. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> awesome. Well, we can't wait to see a BC ball coming later this year to PC, hopefully other platforms in the future. Greg, thank you so much for coming through and celebrating 200 episodes with us. And, uh, yeah, agreeing to continue to be a part of this thing. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I'm honored to be here, and I hope I didn't say too much this time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pick apart. There will be some random thing that was said in like six years down the road. Hey, hang on. Greg said something about his new <laughs> game here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Awesome. But regardless, it's it was wonderful to see just how excited you are about this project. And, uh, I mean, just given the caliber of your previous projects, uh, I mean, this is – should be near the top of everybody's queue once Beastie Ball does eventually come out later on in, in 2024. Uh, Wonder Song, I still say, is my favorite indie game on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, Chicory was our indie game of the year, I believe, for 2022 when it came out. Uh, so uh, anybody listening to this, Greg does good work. No pressure. Beastie Ball better be good. <laughs> I, I think it's really good. I, I'm not going to promise that you're going to like it better, but I like it better. Like, I think it's great. I so. think at the end of the day, like, devs should <laughs> make games that they would want to play. Yeah, so yeah. that's that's how I feel about it. Um, but, you know, yeah, you're allowed to hate it, too. I'd be really curious to hear, honestly. <laughs> honestly, you know, when you play it. I'll, I'll be we'll really interested. Know. Yeah, We'll definitely let you know. We'll for I sure promise you we will it. be playing it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Big time. But once awesome. again, thank you so much, Greg, for joining us yet again here on All In. As always, it was an absolute pleasure. Uh, everybody, make sure to follow Greg uh, on Twitter. Make sure to follow everything that their studio is doing. Check out that newsletter for all the latest updates on Beastie Ball. Super looking forward to that. Uh, and just uh, again, sir, thank you for joining us for episode 200. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Happy 200. Happy 200. Yeah, thanks so much. We'll, <laughs> we'll roll the red carpet one last time for Greg Lobanov. Yay! Yay! <laughs> thanks, Greg. Cool. Appreciate you. Yeah, yeah thanks Good so much. Good luck on the upcoming launch, brother. Appreciate it. Who is that weird guy with all of that hair on his face, man? I don't know. He was kind of scraggly but kind of handsome at the same time. Who was that guy? I just realized my mic was muted the whole time. Um, <laughs> what happened there, man? The the beard uh, kind of came and disappeared, and then like uh, now it's gone again. Like what happened? I don't know. I'm gonna try it again. Like I was using oils and everything like that. I was trying to turn it into. I, I was trying to keep it more ruly, but uh, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do something with it. I don't know. We'll it's see. <laughs> beard it's two point I love how um, people in the chat went with us on the yay that was pretty good that was pretty good <laughs> um cool man well yeah that was uh great to, to hear from greg there for for the indie showcase um obviously great to have him back can't wait for bc ball um obviously so oh yeah very very cool stuff uh eric of course we've got still uh, a little bit of show to go i will say real quick um we of course are doing this live um, my wife's going to come home any minute. So you're all going to hear my dog in the background at some point. So just apologies <laughs> in advance for that. Um, okay. Well, we still have a little bit here, here at the end of the show, Eric, we do have, I think some announcements to get into before we say good night. I mean, are you trying to say that 
it's episode 200 so we should actually have some stuff to talk about for the future of the show i mean can't we just be content to maintain the status quo and just keep doing the show at the level that we have been doing do we really have to make things so much bigger so much better and keep making even better content for all of the amazing community members that we have you know that would be the same thing to do um the same thing to do would be hey You've been doing it and you've been doing it pretty well, you know, for, for a little while. Just keep on keeping on. Um, but, you know, we wanted to make sure that we continue to grow this thing. And um, I think, again, we, we have some things to share with y'all. We've been cooking a bunch of stuff behind the scenes. But at a certain point, there is only so much that two people can do. Um, you know, we have done a lot and we're really proud of what we've done these past 200 episodes, but I think rather than me say it um, and give you guys the announcement, I think I'm just going to have uh, another guest come in real quick. So let's, let's, uh, let's welcome them into the show. Hey, all you all anyans out there. Uh, this is Matt Murray, shy guy city. Look at that handsome aware. boy. Uh, I've been on the all Hi, podcast a few times now Hi, Matt. and I've been lurking like a phantom in the discord for a couple of years, actually. <laughs> uh, and I'm coming at you in way too high of definition for this. Uh, I didn't realize just how high resolution my wife's camera was until I started making test videos for this. And uh, I gotta say, I hate seeing myself in 1080p, so I can't <laughs> imagine what y'all are going through. Uh, you have my sympathies. 1080, so we're, we're relatable. way too many P's for this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I want to give a quick shout out to Seth and Eric on hitting that 200 episode uh, milestone for All In. That's really crazy um, to, th to think about in this space when you're not like IGN or whatever, to hit 200 episodes of a video game podcast uh, without any major change ups or host changes or anything like that. That's really. That is impressive beyond measure, especially uh, at the rate at which you crank these things out and the production value that you put them out at. So huge congrats on that front. That's a that's a huge thing. Uh, I've been listening since, I don't know the number off the top of my head, uh, but it was late October, uh, the Metroid Dread review episode. Um, so over two and a half years now, I think. And, uh, hey, Tim. <laughs> I specifically remember I loaded that episode up to listen to for the first time uh, when I was going to the grocery store. And I have very vivid memories of looking for tea for my wife um, while listening to Seth and Eric talk about Smash Bros. And the indie showcase that week was Savage Halloween, which I, I should probably get around to playing that one of these days. <laughs> I still still it's never played it. Um, but yeah. Again, that huge congrats. Uh, it is very impressive. Uh, it blows my mind to think that I've been listening for as long as I have, and yet there are still like 60-something episodes that I haven't gotten around to see or to hearing yet. Um, so again, huge congrats, guys. Great job. Uh, that said, I was invited on to actually give a little bit of an announcement uh, and not just Glaze. Uh, I've actually come on as a full-on official member of the all-in team now uh so what does that mean primarily uh right now it is mostly that seth and i are doing a podcast together uh you heard that right seth is doing a podcast it's unbelievable <laughs> unbelievable um it is a video game music podcast which you 16 you other know, either of us you well. know that we're quite passionate about that subject um, and it's called Bit Harmony, and I guess let's do a little bit of a reveal right now. Uh, this is the art that my wife drew up for it. Uh, I don't know how good that's coming through. <laughs> Looks okay, besides the sun yeah, Matt, glaring. Matt's wife is a great well, artist. Hey, you'll get a mm -hmm. better look at it uh, when the podcast is up, which should be pretty soon. Um, but yeah, I think my wife's picture did a really good job of capturing the vibe that we're going for with this. Um, we talk about it on the first episode, but Seth and I are really adamant about this being kind of, for one, more conversational. Uh, my dream of this is kind of like a radio show that you might listen to on like a Sunday afternoon. I don't know. 
how many of y'all listen to like NPR, or like specifically Car Talk. Maybe not quite that level. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be two friends hanging out, talking about a thing that they really like. And you're also going to hear some cool music intercut throughout. So I hope you give it a shot. Um, I also did the editing on that myself uh, to relieve Seth of some of his duties. Uh, also, just I was curious to see how my work could stack up. So I hope you all give it a listen for a variety of reasons. Uh, please don't let all this work go to waste. Please listen to it. Uh, I <laughs> promise you in this very first episode, you will hear multiple songs that you've never heard of before. Maybe even some games <laughs> that you've never heard of before. Uh, so again, excited for y'all to see it. And I am excited to be a part of this in a more official capacity going forward. So again, thank you, uh, Eric and Seth for putting this all together. Um, just as a quick end note, I know that you guys inspired me to do some of the creative work that I have started doing in the past couple of years. Um, definitely, you've inspired quite a few people in your community to do stuff like this based on how many podcasts have sprung up <laughs> in the community uh, just since I've been around. So thank you for all of that. That's been a huge... Um, it's, been, it's been huge. You guys have really left an impact... Um, I won't say anything as grand as the industry, but definitely, uh, I don't know, in this fan base of, not fan base of all in per se, but of just video game fans, if that makes sense. Um, so again, congratulations on 200. Check out BitHarmony, and I will leave you uh, to get those details from Seth. So thanks for listening. Bye-bye. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boy. that was the newest member of all in our yeah. very own friend matt shy guy city murray uh seth and matt starting up a brand new podcast again what is this going to be like your 34th 35th podcast that releases <laughs> imagine <every> that <laughs> yeah so it's going to do a podcast what but seth i have a very important question for you that i think everybody would like to know the answer to okay seth when can everybody actually hear the first episode of this new podcast? What if I told you this is like the, um, the Watchmen, you know, thing where like Ozymandias at the end of Watchmen is like, I just did it 27 minutes ago or whatever. What if I told you that it's live right now, Eric, <gasps> our, our patrons, uh, patreon.com slash all in podcast. It just went live. Uh, as Matt was talking, you can listen to, it is shadow dropped for you. Uh, you can listen to it right now if you're a patron. So a great reason to pop a seven day free trial. Episode zero of Bit Harmony has hit patron feeds right now. Now, is it going to be a patron only podcast? No, it's not going to be only for patrons, but patrons are going to get early access to each episode. Um, so if you want to get the show early, uh, it's going to be at least 24 hours of early access for each episode. Um, it's going to be every other week on Sundays. We're kind of going for like a, a Sunday morning drive, chill NPR talk radio yeah, sort yeah. of vibe. Um, and so it's going to be every other Sunday, but, um, patrons will get it at least the, the day early. Um, so another great reason to support, and that's even the people at a dollar a month, um, are, are going to get that early. And, uh, again, it's, uh, a great reason to, to go ahead and pop that, that free trial and, uh, and check it out. And again, episode zero is live right now. I will say, um, our very I first had, shadow drop. Yeah. I, I had a, a really great time kind of conceiving of this. And I just want to say for, for Matt, like, you know, we've, we've kind of thought about how we could bring a third person into this thing. Yeah. The way we do this show is so specific matt is not going to be like a third co-host on this all in a nintendo podcast yeah but he is part of like the all in team the crew he yeah. is the the host of this new show but he's also going to be helping on like back end stuff you're probably going to see him pop up on the youtube channel uh you might see him pop up on streams and stuff like this and he's going to have a more sort of like um hand in everything that we're doing and we're going to finally have another person to grow this thing and and make it bigger and i think that we kind of realized that we had hit the limit of what we could do as just two guys so um 
really cool to to have him in somebody who is like minded who has a lot of the same values and um, I'm really excited to have him in and I'm excited about Bit Harmony. Um, I want to say you know and I've told him this privately but I just want to say it publicly. Um, you know, yeah, it's kind of like a funny joke. Like Seth does a million podcasts and stuff. And I've been podcasting for almost 20 years, if you can believe it. Um, and I've done, you know, a ton of stuff over those years. I've always been the producer of it though. I've never been like, I've always been the one that edits and produces it and stuff like this. So for Matt to come in, you know, a lot of people are like, how can Seth possibly fit another podcast into his already crazy schedule? It's because Matt is taking on the brunt of that work. Like I basically just show up and talk about video game music with one of my best friends and it's awesome. Um, and this is the first time I've ever been able to do that. Like I kind of get to do that and that's weird. Like I've never not been the producer and he did such a great job because the show is kind of, it's a radio show complete with like, we just play full songs in that show. Like we're just, y'all are going to hear music that you've never heard before. We're going to talk about it. We're going to hang out, have a chill vibe and everything, but we just play like straight up full songs. It is like a radio show. And to that end, uh, and we talk about this in, in the episode too, but we want to have community engagement with it. We would love for community members to send in voicemails and stuff like this to play like a radio call-in show kind of thing. Um, we're going to have right after the stream, a sub channel in our discord, uh, dedicated to bit harmony for people to engage with. And there are a couple of ways that you can get like voicemails and like written submissions and stuff to be an active, like community element to every episode of bit harmony. So um, again, episode zero of bit harmony, the, the, the premise of that episode is Matt and I each brought three songs that we felt, um, kind of encapsulated us as people and our taste in music. And so we kind of made this like introductory mixtape sort of thing <laughs> with uh, bit harmony episode zero again, live now for patrons pop that seven day free trial and you can listen to it right now. Yeah. So welcome to the fold, Matt. And even though this even though All In, a Nintendo podcast, is still just going to be uh, co-hosted by myself and Seth. Uh, like Matt is like a, truly a member of this family. So mm -hmm. I want to welcome him into the fold. Congrats and looking forward to to chilling out, Max, and relaxing all cool with you guys on Sundays. <laughs> uh, so it's good, you know. Th those were a couple good announcements. Good way to end episode. 200 too bad we don't have anything else to talk about um but uh you know you know i think we had a good run seth i think it's been a good show pretty pretty good we we of course do still have uh more things to talk <laughs> about i do really quickly though um i'm trying to see if i can find if i can find a way to show you all this yeah let me just show you what the actual artwork looks like not just held up uh to the <laughs> screen um so this is the bit harmony artwork uh, done, of course, by Matt's wife, uh, Natasha very Murray, good. and it's excellent. She crushed it. It's got so oh, many little Easter eggs. I love that Tom Nook pillow back there. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> we were going for the, the what it's supposed to be is like the lo-fi beats to chill to girl, you know, um, but of course it's like an inkling and there's a ton of little Easter eggs in there and it's all like he showed y'all this is hand drawn and hand watercolored. Um, so it's, it's excellent. Uh, I'm just so thrilled with, with her hard work and, um, you know, it looks like an uh, album cover you'd see in coffee talk or something. Yeah. I just, um, I'm so excited for, for y'all to, to hear this and to be involved with the future of it. And, um, it's, it's great, dude. So yeah, definitely everybody check out bit harmony, but, uh, yes, Eric, as you alluded to, uh, there is more, we do have more. In fact, you said something about you know, wanting, uh, you know, like, like that it looks like album art and I don't know about y'all listening, but I love to get like band shirts and like, you know, having album art on like a shirt or something like that is, is always really cool. And we've had a merch storefront for a while now. We shouted out on basically every episode, bit.ly slash all in merch. Right. But we've never had a website of our own. We've never had like an actual, uh, hub for the stuff that we do. Um, and so what we wanted to make sure that we had prepped for all in 200 is an all in website. And Eric, I'm happy to say it's live now. 
You can go to it. Another shadow drop, Seth? Another shadow drop, y'all. It is live right now. You can go to allin.media. And that is the, the URL, allin.media. Yeah. A-L-L-N dot media. And, uh, and you can see this hub here. We're going to do a little quick site tour for the people watching uh, online. Not only do we have some limited time All In 200 merch available on the site right now, which we'll, I'll show you all. It is a new hub for All of Your All In merch with completely refreshed options, cheaper prices compared to our old storefront as well. The standard shirt is $5 cheaper. <clears throat> Um, so this is kind of like a, you know, a, a net positive. Yes, you can get a bit harmony, uh, shirt there as well with the, the bit harmony artwork on it. Uh, in addition to that, you can get a bit harmony holographic sticker, uh, which is very cool and good. And I definitely, definitely want that. Um, there's all kinds of stuff though. This new storefront allows us to do things like embroidered tees. You can get a t-shirt that has an all in spade patch on it. Um, Eric, something I know that you've always wanted is a polo. You can get a polo shirt uh, on here with the all-in spade embroidered onto it. You can get a hat. I can now finally stop slipping up and saying hats by accident whenever <laughs> we talk about it. We do now finally have an all-in hat. Yeah. Um, and yeah. for my show that I do by myself each week, QCF, Quarter Circle Forward, we have QCF merch up on the show as well. Yes. So if you want to pick up your own QCF shirt and start rocking that around the world, I would certainly appreciate that. Um, yep. Embroidered really... tee for that too. Yep. Oh, isn't that so nice? So yeah, for anybody who's a fan of Quarter Circle Forward, my weekly show that goes up at uh, every Tuesday on YouTube, you can get merch for that as well. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you still got the, the Keep Nintendo Weird stuff up there, Seth. Yep. Now, k w you know, this is kind of like this is the k w is an unfortunate casualty of kind of what I was talking about. I just do so much stuff. It's hard to find time for it. k w is not dead. Far from it. I'm going to do more k w But as you all know, um, it's catch as catch can. Um, but that being said, it's still an important part of the all in media sort of channel. And uh, and it is something that I want to I'm, I'm hoping that having Matt on the team frees me up to do k and in a more consistent fashion. So not only can you get, yeah, k and shirts are still up there, but a holographic sticker uh, for k and is there too, which looks really cool. Um, taking a look at this all-in, this limited time all-in 200 merch, we've got three things here. This is only available through the end of June. So you got to get it now. Yep. Um, you've got, you of course have a T with this little design that I made for all-in oh, 200. so nice which is like three cards. Yeah. I understand that there isn't a zero playing card, but hey, it there just is makes, now. there is now. I understand that, but it, but it's still, you know, it, it signifies 200 episodes. I really wanted to make sure that we were kind of like honoring, uh, this occasion with merch and yeah, there's an embroidered version of that too. So you can actually get that as like a little patch on the shirt too. I really like the way that looks, uh, very cool. There is also a limited time holographic sticker, for this as well. That's all shiny and cool, like a little Charizard card. Um, <laughs> very, very neat. Only available through the end of June. So go ahead and get your orders in now uh, for that. The website's also a great hub for our YouTube content. So um, this will work on, of course, your, your PC and your mobile device, but it has all of our most recent videos yeah. right all there the on the front page. All the ones that we've already mentioned this week in the episode. We've got that first look at Let's Revolution there. We've got that, uh, you know, Seth's first look as an, an old white-haired fisherman. Uh, my latest episode <laughs> of UCF is right there with Crimson Viper from Ultra Street Fighter 4. So, yeah, another great way to uh, engage with all the content that we're dropping each and every week. Yep. And then uh, at the very bottom of the page, you also have got a... Uh, a hub that that hyperlinks to all of the podcasts as well that are on our network. So you've got a link to the Spotify page for All In, a Nintendo podcast they're listening to you right now. You've got a page for Bit Harmony, and you've got a page for Keep Nintendo Weird. There's also a weird link here that like seems like it's broken. Slow bo Slowbro dot error. It looks like a broken link. I'm not going to click on it. I don't know what it does, and I recommend that nobody click on it and find out what that does. Hmm. Um, so hmm. yeah, very cool. Uh, yeah, All In dot Media. The website, it's now here with brand new refreshed merch and limited time merch that you can pick up right now. So. Yeah, and links directly to all of the content that we produce. So 
Uh, yeah, just another way that we are continuing to expand our reach, expand the brand, and just try to give you guys more and more and more uh, and as much as possible. Yes. And the, the last thing I want to say um, in terms of this is uh, Triforce tier patrons, and this has always been the case, but I really want to make sure it's hammered home for the new refreshed website and merch store. Um, y'all as Triforce tier patrons have always had access to a 10% discount on the merch store. It worked on the old merch store and everything else, but it was something that I don't think was hammered home quite enough. Um, so there is a new like permanent merch store discount. If you're a Triforce tier patron, you will forever get 10% off merch from all end dot media. Uh, any all end merch, you're always going to get 10% off. And in fact, while we were talking just now, I sent a message to all of our Triforce tier patrons as post in the discord, uh, or sorry, in the, on the Patreon, uh, for Triforce tier patrons with that discount code. So if you're picking up some merch tonight, um, to celebrate all in 200, use that discount code that is available to you on Patreon for the Triforce tier supporters. And Hey, if you want to upgrade to the Triforce tier, this might be a good reason to do it. So Yeah. Pretty exciting stuff, man. Yeah. And if you've got a bunch of, you know, gifts that you need to buy or a bunch of friends that you want to get, you know, all in shirts for, you know, maybe it would be uh, cost effective just to become a Triforce tier member just for the discount. It might be. It's 10% off your entire order. So um, that's that's the way that works. It's very cool. And I, I also want to say that, like, um, a- another thing that I think this kind of allows us for is a lot more flexibility um, when it comes to producing merch more consistently, yes. uh, we, we started the merch store, um, you know, back, I think we might've launched it for episode 100. No, and... we launched it for, uh, the, uh, the golden aces 2022, okay. uh, because for a while that was, that was the last piece of limited edition merch that we had was for the, the golden aces a year and a half right. ago. Right. So I want to make sure that we're doing stuff like that more consistently. And I'm, again, I'm hoping that adding like a third person to the crew kind of allows me a little more wiggle room to organize stuff like this and get limited time merch and things like new merch drops consistently. In fact, there's already a new piece of BitHarmony merch that is in the works that will be on the merch store pretty soon. So like already there are things that are coming uh, to provide further updates to the website and merch store. So Pretty exciting. I, I think yeah. it's kind of cool to finally have all end dot media. We don't have to, you know, point people to a weird bitly link or whatever. Like we, <laughs> you can go to all end dot media and get your hub for the podcast, the YouTube channel, the merch and all that stuff. And, uh, I'm really excited about it. It's, it's really cool. And I think, um, <clears throat> in a weird way makes the, it makes it feel real. Like it makes it feel official you know, to have like this, this, you're not platform. really on the internet. If you don't have a website kind of thing, there we go. Fulia says Patreon level up for this koala. Thank you for your support. Fulia. Uh, thank you to everybody. But that's, that's what we got guys. Some cool announcements. Um, the future of, of all in is, is looking bright. This is episode 200. And, uh, we were thrilled to be able to share this moment with you guys. And just want to thank everybody again for coming along with us on the journey, man. It's, um, it's crazy to consider, how far this has come over these past almost four years, but I'm excited for the future. I am too. And doing what we've just done just gives us the opportunity. These are not dead ends. These are ways that will allow us to continue to grow even yes. more. These are not just individual, uh, you know, individual ways that all is growing within a vacuum these the you know adding matt and all of his expertise and his awesomeness that he's going to bring to the table having this website these are ways that we are adding to the brand now but ways that it's going to make it easier for us to continue to expand later uh this is something that we have continued to do throughout all in we have added more shows more content we've added the merch store we've added uh you know so many new things, the Patreon and all the new content and all the content that we've started creating exclusively for the patrons, what we offered when we did episode one of all in versus what we offer as a brand now here at all in episode 200 is let's just say we did a top five earlier about leveling up 200%. It is so much more than that, that we offer 
uh, at this point, and we are incredibly proud of what we've been able to do with this show just in the past four years. And I am incredibly excited about what this is going to mean for our future and what we're going to be able to continue to provide people in the years to come. Yeah, man, it's um, it's really cool. It's 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 crazy. I, I appreciate everybody uh, that's here live right now and all the congrats in the chat and stuff like that. Quick uh, rundown of the announcements, real quick. Website is live now. All in dot media. Triforce tier patrons get a ten percent merch discount, which you now have access to in the Patreon. So if you're a Triforce tier supporter, I stress to you. You never have to pay full price for all in merch at the Triforce tier. Make sure you're using your discount code and that's available to you on the Patreon right now. All in dot media live now. Matt, our brand new uh, all in team member uh, coming on in as the host and producer of bit harmony alongside myself, bit harmony, our video game music podcast now on our network now live with episode zero on the Patreon for all patrons at every tier right now where you will get early access and you don't have to wait until every other Sunday. After the stream, there will be a BitHarmony sub-channel in our Discord. So if you're not in our Discord community, join up. Links are in the description, in the show notes. Um, so join up on our Discord. Free, friendly, welcoming, amazing community of, of people. Um, and in there, you'll see the sub channel where you can get involved with future episodes of bit harmony. The next one is actually going live because we, people who have been following us for a little bit know that we had to delay this episode a bit. So it's actually kind of pushed bit harmony forward a little bit too, where you're not going to have to wait that long. Normally it's going to be every two weeks. Well, this one, our second episode is going to be uh, going live to the public on the 21st. So we're actually recording the next episode like next week. So um, there, there's going to be a quicker than normal turnaround for it uh, for Bit Harmony this this next episode. But really excited, really cool stuff. Um, I think that's what we got, man. I think that's yeah. episode 200. I want to see those QCF shirts sold out. I want to see those QCF shirts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and definitely if y'all pick up some merch, when it comes in, the merch is made to order. It's I think the estimate for shipping is like five to seven days or something. Um, when it comes in, make sure to take pictures yeah, and tag, tag us. us, post it yeah. in the Discord and all that stuff. Um, I, I'm I'm hopeful that you know this this new website and this new merch store will make it even easier for for y'all to rock some some cool all in merch. And it just gives us so many more options. Uh, this new storefront we've just got a, a, I mean it it is exponential the amount of stuff that we can do. Here. Fulia says a year for Australia. So next year we'll see Fulia with her all in merch. Uh, so really cool. But yeah, yeah man, her all in two hundred shirt will come in right around episode three hundred. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the thing too, though. Like I wanted to make sure that we, you know, we had something permanent to say. Hey, this happened. Like the two hundred episodes of this show. It's a crazy milestone. It happened, and now you can get merch that like signifies that you were here. You know. Yeah. So. So now that. Uh, we have this. I can start to change up my ad read a little bit. I can start to change up my outro a little bit. So, but uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us for All In episode 200. If you want to reach out to us, you can do that at allin.media. Uh, right. In addition to that, you can reach out to us on social media at All In Podcast, on Twitter, on Facebook. Make sure to join our amazing Discord, as we have said ad nauseum throughout this episode. Also, make sure if you're following us here on YouTube, go ahead and like the video, subscribe, click the bell for notifications so you never miss another video from us here again you can also go to all in dot media to check out all the videos there as well and i mean again as we've said uh in addition to all of the stuff that we've done all of the stuff that we are now going to do do not sleep on that patreon guys that's right. Patreon.com slash all in podcast. Get things like discounts on the merch, get things like early access to content like a bit harmony. Again, bit harmony episode zero available right now, like a two hour long introductory episode with, with Matt and I, and, uh, <laughs> are you I can't saying that an all in show went long? It's long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can, can you Im imagine that? Um, and a ton of content that goes up there every single week between the exclusive podcast that we do only for our patrons, um, you know, between Side the video content. 100's coming up. 
side quest 100 is coming i mean we we do so much on patreon so we really do appreciate y'all's continued love and support over there continuing to add value to uh to our treasured friends and supporters so yeah all in me uh, all in dot media pick up some merch but hey if you don't have any bones to throw away that's okay too supporting the show for free you can do stuff like leaving comments here on the youtube video on the vod um, you can, of course, leave five-star ratings if you listen to us on your podcast service of choice. Uh, and that is a free and easy way to support our show. 200 episodes down. I can't believe it. Um, but your your love and support means the world to us. Yeah. And this is not the end. We already have so many ideas for stuff that we want to cover in the coming weeks already. And we are super excited to keep this train rolling. But for all of you who have been with us for the past 200 episodes, to all of you amazing patrons, to everybody who picked up a piece of merch at our last merch store and will be picking up a piece of merch at our new merch store at, again, allin.media. It's everybody who has dropped words, comments, whatever, on any of our content and anybody who has left reviews for us on any of the podcast services you happen to follow us on. To each and every one of you, I would like to extend an episode 200 na ma stay <laughs> a powerful namaste that comes uh, from 200. deep within the diaphragm <laughs> guys uh thank you so much again um from the from the bottom of my heart for 200 episodes of uh if you've been with us the whole way if you're coming in more recently um your support means more to us than we can say this has been the you know some just just so gratifying and the community that that is behind this show is uh is the best in the world man so i i just i i appreciate y'all so much and um yeah exciting stuff man exciting yeah, stuff it is i'd be lying if i said i wasn't probably going to listen to those community submissions on loop <laughs> for the next <laughs> few weeks or so those were genuinely touching thank you everybody to to whoever uh submitted those and uh i mean here we are 200 down and we ain't stopping folks so we will see you right back here next week for another brand new episode of all in a nintendo podcast but until then i am still super mario rpg legend of the seven erics and i am still seth the hero of time 200 episodes later here's to the next 200 we love you all very much we'll see you next time bye bye